Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Bulldog Stadium, home of the Granville Bulldogs. I'm Andrew Kovac, coming to you 92 steps high above the west side of the Bulldog Stadium, where we're ready to kick off another season of Bulldog football on WCET-TV. I'm here tonight with Tom Beist, a trustworthy companion and partner here, and uh, we're going to get a few words from him, but Tom... This is a special night. We have a new feature tonight. Do you know what that is? No. Enlighten. Well, it's called the Russo's Pizza WCET Senior Spotlight Player. Ooh, I like that. It's the, uh, I started that back last spring in uh, girls softball, and so we're going to bring it over to the football stadium, and we're going to spotlight a senior bulldog throughout the game. I'll give you a little bit. I interviewed the young man earlier today. And it's also a Russo's Pizza night. Now, you know what that means. Well, uh, that just means things are going to be good, they're going to be warm, and you're going to be filled. And that means if you call in Russo's Pizza at 530-3200, and you're the first one to do it tonight and tell Mike Russo who the Russo's Pizza player of the game is, you can get yourself a free pizza. But like I always say, don't stop there. Grab a Coca-Cola product, some breadsticks, some of those wonderful tiramisu or cannolis. He's also got a whole line of Italian uh, pastries and some Italian groceries in his cooler. It's a hot one tonight, Tom. It's 83 degrees with a lot of uh, humidity out there. I was down there talking to the guys, and uh, we're going to get it going. But before we get it going, Tom, what do you have to say for yourself as we get started here? in 2022 at Bulldog Stadium. Well, as Granville takes the field, good crowd tonight. Byron Center's about to go across. Great turnout from Byron Center as well. We're looking at the first meeting of these two Bulldog teams in the history of these schools, and it should be a good one. Byron Center's coming off from a six and two season. Uh, they averaged uh, over 24 points a game, but they gave up over 23 points a game and still managed a six and three total season. Well, both of these teams have played one game so far. The Granville Bulldogs took on Grand Blank at Grand Blank. Had no problem with them as they ran the wing tee and beat up on Grand Blank 49 to 25. Now the Bulldogs, they had to go to Battle Creek Central. They didn't have it quite so easy. They went to overtime, Tom, and they still prevailed, though, 34-27. Yep. Granville comes in, Andy, coming off from a really nice season. They averaged over 38 points a game. They gave up only 22 points a game and marched to a 7-4 record. They're looking at a very daunting season, though, Andy, uh, tonight, next week against Hudsonville, and then on the 23rd, they have Caledonia followed by Rockford. So their season starts out hot and heavy here. They need wins, and they need them right away. Speaking of wins, we've got a little uh, wind heading from the southwest to the northeast. The flag is flying uh, high, and we're going to take a break as that flag flies. And remember why we're playing this game in freedom. It's because of the boys in the blue. And we're gonna take a break for our national anthem. Well, once again, welcome to Bulldog Stadium, home of the Granville Bulldogs, who are taking on the hosts from the south, the Byron Center Bulldogs. This is an MHSAA contest, and it's referee number 72. And tonight's referees are, well, the referee, I should say, sports officials. Tonight, the referee wearing the right hat. The white hat is uh, from Nuego, Brian Donovan. He's a 15-year veteran. 
our umpire. He'll be the one hanging out with all of the linebackers. That's Jeff Green from Grand Rapids, working for 30 years. Mark Bradburn out of Lowell has been working 22 years. He'll be the headline judge. The line judge is Rodney Suggs from Kentwood, 17 years. And keeping up with the speedsters in the backfield is Daryl Dillard, a 20-year veteran out of Wyoming. Our, yard, or our uh, chain gang is headed up by <coughs> Gus Terrell on the clip. Dave Zipkowski and Dick G. Brad will be on the sticks. And John Hess will keep the numbers on the yard marker. Again, it's 83 degrees here at game time. And we want to welcome all of you around the world, such as Amar in Kolkata, also known as Calcutta, India. My Aunt Diana in Houston, Texas. And all of our troops in Guantanamo Bay, that's down in Cuba. They also call it Gitmo. We're all around the world, Tom. Hey, and uh, Byron Center won the toss. They deferred. So Granville will be getting the football to take uh, this game off. And they will be going from our left to right, so from the north to the south end zone. And we're just about ready to get underway. Byron Center's going to tee it up right on the 40. We got a perfect night. Once the national anthem was played, uh, the wind kicked up a little bit, so our national colors got to flutter a little bit. And this should be a great contest tonight. These are two really good football teams. I think Byron Center, with even as tough a schedule as they have, can produce a 6-2 and two record. And I'm going to be overconfident, and I think the Bulldogs from Granville can come up with a 7-1 and one record. I see only one stumbling block in their schedule. So here we go, Andy. we got 12 on the clock. Ball's on the tee. Byron Center's ready to put a foot in it. Well, we know we may have a special guest in the third quarter. I did talk to uh, Roger Barrett, the superintendent. He is either going to make an appearance tonight or on the 23rd as Big Andy Big. The Bulldogs on the kickoff are down the sideline at the 40, on, Andy. the 30, Go on. 20, 10. On the opening kickoff to start the game, to start the season here at home. Number 17 for the Bulldogs. Takes it to the house. I see no yellow flags on the field. That's Tyson Mann. He went a long ways. Did you see where he caught that ball from? He took off just, just about the 18, Andy. About the 18. So that's about an 82-yard return, and with 11 seconds to go, it's Bulldog six. They'll be going for two as they saunter up to the line, Tom. I'll tell you, magnificent blocking by the Granville return team. Absolutely, that kickoff return team, spectacular blocking. He hit the hole right at the right moment and then just put and it they, into third and fourth gear. And the Bulldogs from Granville, we're going to have to specify that tonight, aren't we? Yes, we the are. The Bulldogs from Granville in there maroon jerseys with the white numbers they oh. sealed off that right side so tyson mann could take it to the house and those are their championship jerseys from 25 years ago andy and into the He's end over. zone who is that number smith is that's that 18, 18 andy 18 carson smith he's your quarterback also at times in this case, he was lined up as one of the wing T, was yep. he not? Came right out of the wing T, Andy, and put two on the board. And all of a sudden, with just 11.49 on the clock, Granville eight, Byron Center nothing. Well, I didn't even have a chance to tell you. Like I said earlier, we got a new feature tonight. It's called the WCET Russo's Pizza Senior Spotlight Player. And that player is number five. He is a tight end. He is a outside linebacker. He's a WCET broadcaster at times. That would that be would, Logan, right? Logan Stockwell. And we'll tell you more about Logan. Maybe some of the things you don't know about Logan, we will reveal as the game goes on. Well, the Granville kicker, number 15, Isaac Strock, prefers to kick on the far hash mark. So he will move it over to his left, to the right of the Byron Center receiving team, put it up on the tee on the 40. And we'll see what happens when we go the other way. And he puts a foot into it. Short kick. High. From the 22. And out to the 30, 31 is where the white shirt Bulldogs from Byron Center will start their series of downs in this away game. This is their second away game as they started off, as I said earlier, 
on the road and had to win in overtime. Well, a beautiful tackle by 35, Reed Gat Graverson. Just a magnificent open field tackle. Here come the Bulldogs from Byron Center. In the wing team. Oh, We're in the shotgun, off. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked like the uh, Good fullback hole. took number, off early. Number 22, Aiden Doran with the tackle, the senior from Granville. Didn't it look like this uh, fullback uh, took a few steps forward? He Just a little bit. You but can't he, do that. Well, you can if you don't get caught. Well, okay. So here we go. Four on the first uh, play, second down and six. Ball spotted on the 34. Back up in the shotgun. Granville with four down linemen. They're man-to-man -man on defense, on the coverage. Going to change the play, Andy. He's resetting it. From the shotgun with just one guy guarding him. There's a flag on the oh, play. Blood, it's blood still. We got, uh, yep. we got motion, Andy. Motion on the right side. Yep. It's going to be five-yard penalty. Well, Byron that, Center's a little flustered there, Tom. Yeah, well, you get one run back on the opening kickoff, it's going to shake you a little bit. Had a good play on first down, but give it right back here. In the house. They'll set it up, second and ten. Ball now all the way back to the 30. In the house, our third man here, Jeff Goodyear. Granville again with four down linemen. Linebackers are off. Quarterback keeper up the right side. It's going to be tackled in the backfield, however. Number 41 for the Bulldogs shooting even, that gap. Even Cat it actually made the tackle, but we had penetration from the Granville front four that bounced him back. That sets up third down and 13. And Byron Center's going backwards. Let's see if uh, Granville dials it up here a little bit and sends somebody. But we might see for the first time Byron Center put it in the air here. It's interesting, Carson Smith is wearing number 18 in past years. Was he not number 14? I believe you're right. So here comes Byron Center, Granville looking for a stop here and really put the hurt on him to get this ball back. Far right hand or left hand side is uh, our senior spotlight, Logan Stockwell. He's jumped all the way up to. Oh, he missed an open man, he had him. Nobody there though. Oh, he tripped. Ball's loose, but it'll be down. Ball's down. It's going to be short. Legs just couldn't keep up with the mind there, so it's going to be fourth down. Nice block on uh, Logan, though. He was going around for the uh, outside tackle and got blocked pretty well. He's uh, jumped up to six foot four. Here's our first punt. Granville sends one back. Everybody's matched up on the outside. Fourth and four, ball on the 35. I believe that's got to be Tyson Mann, number 17, in the back. Clean snap. No pressure whatsoever. No, nope. good kick. It's going to go out of, out of bounds, though. It was Tyson Mann. He ran the opening kickoff back, and it's going to be out of bounds at about the 32-yard line, and that's where the Bulldogs will show us what that wing tee is all about, Tom. Well, we'll see once. I mean, uh, they had a good week last week, um, played a good game, we're in control. So let's see once what happens here. Well, I think Carson Smith, unless they told me something different, is the starting quarterback. He's wearing number 18, and he will be, but he took that ball uh, on the uh, two-point conversion and went in with it. By Byron's got six up on the line with two linebackers. Third man oh, through. big bump inside, and they're gonna wrap him. That hole closed fast. Yep. That hole closed fast. Well, the uh, handoff took a little uh, while to develop. In the wing tee, it's got to be bang, bang, as we know, Andy. And when it's not, that block isn't held that long. And uh, they got broken up in a hurry. 71 in the front of that line kind of broke it up, and they closed in a hurry. So that's going to set up only one on the, on the play. It's going to set up second down and nine. Lucky that he got the one because that play took too long to develop, like you said. Yep. It was a third man through for the Granville Bulldogs. Well, they'll be relentless here. They'll go right back at it. Smith is quarterback. He's under center. He's going to keep it himself. He's got some room. He's going to get about six. Well, number 71 dragged him down from behind from Byron Center, and that's Timothy Clay. 
Timothy active on the inside. You give him five, total of six now, it's third and four. You know, that's an extra feature right there with Smith running the ball because with the wing tee, you've got one, two, three, and if Smith keeps it, now you've got four. Well, they had a lot of misdirection there, and he just turned around and fouled his blocker. So here's a big third down. First man through. He's got enough for the first down, being pushed across the 45, out to the 47. The chains will move, and Gus Terrell will stick the clip down at a new line to gain. Justin Reichart with the tackle, and the assist goes to Landon Toongate. Great, great play by Granville. Kept within their, within their plan, within their business plan, kept it on the ground. Great blocking on that right side. Let's see if they start to pick on that left side a little bit, but they seem to be favoring the right side of that offense right now. Big number 73, Mike Medewis, 295 pound. Uh, left side, he gone, Andy. Look at that, he turns around and looks. There's nobody gonna touch him. No flags. No From flags, 46, Andy. It's a 54-yard TD for number three, Carson Kopko, well, junior running back. Little trap, Andy, off the right, off the left guard. Little trap off the left guard. The line just blew the hole open, and he danced all the way. That was pretty. <laughs> I'm so used to watching games on TV. I went to look at the monitor for the replay. Oh, that wait, we, we don't have a replay tonight. Nope, Granville coming down for that two-point conversion. 54-yard run right there for number three. And a timeout, Granville. Something not quite right on that uh, try for the extra point. Well, Kopko had no problem. He shot that uh, middle and was gone. That boy's got some speed. Well, they pounded that right side. They pounded that right side, and then the little trap on the inside, and the guard, center guard, blew that hole open over there, and he just danced all the way in. I mean, he even looked back going like, he, there's nobody here. He looked back at the 10-yard line to make mm. sure that he there's could nobody just here. go in. Byron center back on their heels here. The dogs uh, from uh, Granville with 14 looking to put a couple more up on the board, and we've still got 7:01 here left in the first quarter. Our officials are going to be tired because they've been hiking up and down. Well, I talked to Suds earlier. I asked him if he had his track shoes on. He said nobody was going to get past him. We'll and talk then Dill the Dillard's in the backfield. He's got some wheels too, so he should be okay. He's a young guy. But we'll talk to him in the fourth. Here we go. <laughs> You're right, because it's hot out there. 84, 83 degrees at game time. Open, Smith. open. Touchdown, or uh, two points. Beautiful pass. Number eight with the reception there, Andy. I don't have a number eight, do you? Uh, that's, I'm sorry. No, we don't. It is number eight, but I don't know who that we is. We don't have a number eight. We'll have to have Jeff Goodyear get on that for us and find out who number eight is. Three. No, it's three. Oh, it's three? Yep. Carson Cupco. Oh, that's Cupco then. Okay, he got the first uh, six and give him the next two. Yep. It did look like an eight though, didn't it? It did in the sun. Okay, so give him that whole kit and caboodle on that one. So he's got, he's got 16 pointed up on the board and the the dogs from Granville are sitting good. Byron Center here's gotta come out. They gotta get the football and do something with it because uh, they give Granville another score and Granville loves to grind it out and run that clock. Grind it out and run that clock and they can do that for three quarters without really breaking too much of a sweat. Once again, he's gonna uh, tee it up. Granville put 49 on the board last week against 25 for uh, Graham Blank. And so uh, Bulldogs are on their way to another 49 as long as they don't get overconfident and they hold on to the ball. Can never have turnovers and you know we've seen those. Yeah, they pop fast, and when they do, the uh, momentum changes quickly. A look at our friends from Hudsonville Unity Christian. They should have been state champions, but with five turnovers in that game, it's yep. hard to win. Strock going to put his foot into it here, Andy. Short kick. A little pooch kick again yep. at the 25. Dives across the 30, yeah. out to the 32. That wasn't actually a pooch kick, but no, uh, he just puts it in the air, and they do pretty good coverage. Yeah. Keep it right around the 30-yard line. The pooch is usually around the 40. And the way the way this looks, they've been practicing that. They're not asking him to kick it extremely deep. They just want it in the air and high, so they can do the coverage. It mitigates a big run back because you've got your people down there quick. So, first and ten, ball on the 32. Who's that? Fire center will snap it with 6:57 left here in the first quarter. What'd you say our kicker's number was? 15. 
15. So Isaac Strock there. Oh, not much right there, but nope, maybe a gain not of much one. at all. Good interior line there for the Bulldogs. Number 78 was in on that play. 76 in on the tackle. Steven Jackson was Heisen in on that too. Yeah, 78 was in. 78. There. 78 Heisen in on that tackle. He was all over it. Short gain. Heisen maybe a yard. 275 uh, 70 pound. What is he? Uh, He's a senior. Well, he leans on you for a while. You'll know about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I think this is going in the air, Andy. This has got everything. they got to open this up a little bit. They're not gaining anything inside. He's open. Beautiful pass. All we put it on the nines. Across the line or across the 50, down to the 40. Take it all the way to the 36-yard line. Big pass play. Yep, rough ran him down, but uh, great route and uh, beautiful throw. Right in stride, right on the money, right in the hands. Right well, there. we know we can throw, so Byron Center's probably going to open this up. That's a big gain, and it they, was. they needed it if they're going to stay in this football game. So first and 10, ball all the way down on the 34-yard line of Granville. Byron Center coming up, first and 10, 556. Well, you, left ca here you called in the first. that one. I think Byron's got to open it up. In the shotgun. Hands it off, though. No, nope. oh, no, we've got a flag. we got a penalty. we got motion. Yep. From the left side, from the left side of the offense, we had motion. Took off too soon. Boy, those are, yeah, those are costly penalties for Byron Center. You've got momentum going, and then you have that happen on that left side. That is tough. Now, instead of first and 10, maybe a pickup of three or four, it's going to be first and 15. Yep. Oh, they're saying Granville? Well, then wait, wait a minute. Then he went the wrong way the first time. And he made the wrong signal. So he said, he said uh, Bulldogs were across the line. For right, but he sides. actually marched it he the did. other way. He did. So he's corrected it. The umpire's corrected it. Well, to make it first and five for the Byron Center Bulldogs. And that changes things a lot. Hmm. Interesting. It wasn't definitive when they called it. No, because he it, gave a motion he, signal. He pointed, yeah. Well, here we go. He said it was encroachment. Uh, isn't that also offsides? Byron Center... The four down linemen, the linebacker up on the strong side. Looking for some help from his coach. We got isolation out on the far side. Let's Mark see if the Sisto. safety shifts over for Granville. Inside handoff. Not going anywhere right there at the 30, no. maybe the 29. Yeah, 58 in on the tackle. That's Landon Hunt for Granville. Landon Hunt in on the tackle. Great defensive play. Good, good movement up front by the by Granville Bulldogs there. Byron Center, though, still in good position. Second down and five. Ball's on the 29. 449 left here in the first. So Byron no Center game. puts a score on here, and, and they're back in. They climb into this with a really difficult start. I still think he's got to throw the ball. He can't stay run heavy here. He's back to pass. And oh, got, we got another penalty. Now, that time, I, I think there's motion. There you go. He, mo he calls motion again. <laughs> Let's see if they actually... And he pointed, he pointed that way. Yeah, dead ball motion. Okay. All right, so we traded uh, penalties back and forth here. So it's going to bring up second and 10. <laughs> yeah, that's just, again, Byron, you know, on the move, on the march. We're going to have to use our but official. That, that left side of their offense got to stay settled down. We're going to have to use our officiating uh, skills and not make the call too soon. Not That's right. We'll have to just settle down a little bit. It's early in the season, so it's easy to get excited. So here comes Byron Center. Got that second down and 10, balls on the 34. Clock is ticking at 4.12, left here in the first. Let's see if they commit. They were going to the air. Let's see if they stay with that. Going deep, Andy. Oh, what a catch. Oh, what a catch. 34 yard. Diving catch into the end that zone. That is a touchdown. That was a magnificent throw and catch. Number. That was a magnificent throw and catch. Is that number 10? Number 10 caught it from Byron Center. Wow. That's uh, Brady Brett, and Brady made a magnificent, but that's a great throw. Nobody oh, but Brady was, was going to catch that ball. It was. A, uh, the try for the extra point will be a kick. Number seven for Byron lining up. Alex. Walburn to put his foot in it. 
Kick is it up. It is just over. <laughs> I was going to say, it just sneaked over. Might have actually had a hand on it. I'm not sure. But Blair in center. Quarles Barrett way back in. Fights off a couple of penalties. And gets a beautiful pitch and catch down in the left corner of the end zone. Probably a, as good a throw in high school as you're going to see in a beautiful reception. And now we're 16-7 here in Granville with 356. We've had quite a first quarter here. We're off and running. Well, again, both of these teams, like Andy said, put up a lot of points last week. Byron Center put up 34. Granville put up 49. And again, over the years, they've averaged over 24, and Granville's averaged over 38 in the last year. So both of these offenses know how to score. Well, and they Granville, both play stiff competition. I think Granville learned something from that uh, play. Um, I think that was number four was your outside uh, defensive back. That was Drew Hungerford, and Drew uh, got This is going to go out of bounds, isn't it? Yep. yep. Well, that'll benefit Granville because they'll take advantage of that. Whoa, a little extracurricular activity. <laughs> number 25 uh, After the rolling. ball had gone out of bounds, but they'll settle it out. No flags. Granville will take the 30 or the 25-yard penalty from the 40. That'll put it down to their own 35. Yeah, great place to start. And they'll have their wing tee coming out under the direction of Carson Smith, senior. He was a, a sophomore when we first saw him quarterbacking. He didn't get a lot of time, but he learned a little bit, and now he's out there as a senior. And he's wearing number 18, because I know in the past he was number 14. Well, here comes Granville in their wing tee. That's Mann. Mann's got a hole up the middle. He's he across sure the 45, out to the 47. Luke Laska, number 19, finally ran him down. They're going to say his knee hit at the 46, but that's a move of the chains, and Dick G. Brad will get some uh, steps in on his uh, Fitbit. Granville calm, getting the call in. Great discipline on that offensive line so far. That quick hitter, the one that went for the touchdown, isn't going to go very far. No. Number six from Byron Center, that's Bowden Hurley with the tackle. Give him one, I think, on that play. Uh, no, they're going to put it right back where it started. Yeah, that one, that one uh, the block was missed on the inside the, on the trap by the center and the guard, and he, Bowden just stepped in there and ruined the whole thing. I think the middle mm -hmm. linebacker stepped in there. Carson so, talks we, to uh, Stiegel, Stiegel, Coach Stiegel, Eric Stiegel, gives him his words of advice, and uh, Smith now under center. Second and ten. Counter. Out to the 50, going to pick up yardage, four. But number six in on the tackle, Bowden Hurley again. He's been active up front, but much better blocking and a much better line surge for Granville to pick up. Yeah, good five, good four, so it's going to be third down and six. Ball's right on the 50-yard line. That's Jaden Terry. I believe his older brother um, was the tailback a couple years ago for the Bulldogs. Well, here we go. Big play on third down. That's Tyson Mann. He's Big got hole. a spot. He's got some room. Oh, he's, he's gone. Done. I don't think anybody's going to touch him. No, he's gone. 50 yards for Tyson Mann. He had to break a tackle, spin around, and then he put the put the hammer down and went 50 for another Byron Center, uh, excuse me, Granville Bulldog. We got well, too many Bulldogs on the field here. He juked one and he spun out of another tackle, yes. and he just kept right on going. And he ran out of his shoe. I don't know if you know that, but on the spin, when he ran out of the tackle, his shoe left. he lost his shoe. He's coming to the sidelines. He's going to put that back on. Blew a tire, but still got home. <laughs> there you go. Well, this is an artificial surface, uh, so you can't really say the field's in good shape because it's always in good shape. Well, at 22 points, uh, 208, they're going to go for their two, as they always do. And again, they've been real successful. Their percentage is very high. Oh, he's got a convoy. He's in. That's Smith. Or <laughs> Who is that number? Next Smith taking a, no. 28. 28. Yep. That's Jaden Terry. And he waltzed right in. He had a wall. He just followed the wall and just 
Kind of slid right in there underneath him. Now, you know the interesting thing about Jaden Terry. What's that? He's a freshman. Wonderful. He's a freshman. Starts yeah. for the Bulldogs. That is going to work out well for a long time. To have a ninth grader already starting who carries the ball like that and runs with power. 24 points on the board to the seven from Byron Center. And we've still got 208 left here in the first quarter. A lot going on here. We'll see how the boys stay hydrated. What was the uh, time of that uh, Byron Center uh, touchdown? Did you get that? No, I did not. Did you get the time, Jeff, on that Byron Center touchdown? I didn't mark it down. By Granville scored at 701, and then in between 701 and 208. Well, Brody uh, Lard tees it up on the 40 yard line. And once again, he'll get to kick. Let's see if he stays consistent with putting that ball somewhere right around the 30, high enough in the air that they get good coverage. The Bulldogs have them spread out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six wide. Yeah, he does it again, right about the 30. Good coverage, one miss. Good hit there by 25 from Granville. Kind of knocks him to the ground. Mason Albrick. Mason knocked him down. So Byron Center coming off a 34-yard uh, pass to Bright. Will take over at the 35. They're marking it right at the 35. Yeah, good coverage. I mean, he puts the ball high in the air. They yeah. close well. They cover well. There's not much of a run back. It's a good plan if you execute it consistently. Hey, well, that little pop in the air is going to yep. slow everybody down, not going to get All any right. run All right, Byron can't afford to cough it up, so they got to keep pace here with the Granville boys. Too wide to the right, and a handoff to number nine. He's got the corner. He's going to go out of bounds right about the 41-yard line. Well, Summers strung it out nice. He let him a little bit around the corner, but he strung it out nice. He stayed with him and didn't allow the big break. Had he gotten around him sooner, he might have gone for major yardage, but... Eh, probably a six yard gain. Gonna be second down and four. Ball spotted on the 35 yard line. But I like I like the play. He strung it out nice. He didn't get a lot of support, but he strung it out nice. Coming Look. right at us at the uh, 45 yard line. That's at number five. He's our senior spotlight player, Logan Stockwell. We'll be talking about him in a little while. They're gonna go man to man with their four down linemen. Byron Center, I think, is gonna go the air again. No, he's gonna keep it. Great line penetration, Byron. Center stuffed. Barely back to the 40. I think they're going to lose a uh, yard yep. on that. 22 shot in. Aiden Doran shot in from the outside, but it's that defensive line that blew that all up. Took the blocking out, and he was just kind of dancing on his own, and then uh, Aiden just closed and ended it really fast. It's third and four. They're putting it right back at the line of scrimmage, which was the 41. They need to get out to the uh, 45 for the... Yeah. Yard to gain, line to gain. I know Byron wants probably balance with their offensive possessions, but I think he's got to go to the air. He's got to keep Granville back on their toes, or that defensive line is just going to mess him up too much. So here we go. Two to the right, one to the left. He's looking to the left. He's got a pass across the middle. It. And just a touch behind. Number 10 had yep. come across. Brady had come across. Rick. And he, Brady was there, but the ball was slightly behind him, and he was on a full break on that post, and it just didn't mesh good. So we're going to see another punt here. Yep, Mark Sisko sending out his punter. The Bulldogs, uh, Tyson Mann's going to drop back to about the 30. Great stand by the Granville defense. Just an excellent defensive stand. One minute, six seconds to go here in the first. It's 24-7 Bulldogs. Last time he just punted it out of bounds. We got a shot from the outside here. Nope, we're going to see a little bit of a, nope, he's going to let it bounce. It's going to bounce. Get, get out of the way. It's a Granville bounce back to the 35. Yeah, they'll take that. Granville will take yeah. that. Bounce right over the top of the Bulldogs from Byron Center. Yeah, it had a little backspin on it, and she yeah. just shot off to the right side and uh, came forward about five yards, and Granville will take that anytime. Ball spotted on the 35, first and 10. They're in control here. 58 seconds to go, Carson Smith will come out. He already leads here 24 to seven. It has been a fast first quarter. So here comes Granville. They're looking to grind one out here. Chew up clock and grind out. In the way way into that second quarter, Andy. Handoff, ooh, nothing going there. 
maybe one. I think that's going to go to number 28, Jaden Terry. Ryan Strickland from Byron Center with the tackle. Uh, fended off a block, great foot movement, wrapped him up and brought him to the ground. Short gain. And the clock continues to tick. They will have to get one play off here, won't they, Andy? Before I believe so. There's ends. 30 seconds to go. They'll get one off here and then switch sides. Granville right now is going from the north to the south. Carson, first man across. Nope, number 19 came across. Andy blew up the hole. Laska, Luke Laska. He saw the vacated spot, and he just shot through from the linebacker spot, made a great tackle. That's going to set up third down and nine. Gonna They're going to let the clock tick, and they'll go talk about it on the sidelines. Well, that's where we end the first quarter. Are we uh, going to a break? We are going to a break. So we'll be back after a few messages from our sponsors. It's Russo Pizza time. Our first quarter score, 24-7, Granville Bulldogs. It's time to experience the flavor of Russo's Pizzeria. Pickup, delivery, and catering available. Proudly serving you since 1953. With generations of recipes to satisfy any craving, we're ready to make your next meal. Call us up or stop in the corner of 44th and Burlingame to get your piece of the action today. Welcome back to Bulldog Stadium, home of the Granville Bulldogs in this WCET Thursday night extravaganza. We're coming to you on Thursday night because it's Labor Day weekend, and this gives the parents a chance to get out of town on Friday after one period of play. The Bulldogs from Granville lead the Bulldogs from Byron Center 24-7. It's third and nine. Look at this, two shifts on this one, really interesting. No wing tee, it looks like it's going to be a pass. Inside handoff, oh. and it got blown up really fast. Number six. Oh, they got a flag. Hang on just a minute. We got a flag from the other side. We might have offsides. I'm not sure. I That's, wonder if they were set. Well. There was a lot of movement. It could be anything here. Because Granville had a lot of movement. That's the uh, line judge, Rodney Suggs, talking to Brian Donovan, the I referee. Think it's against, I think it's against Granville. I don't think they were set. Let's see. And he'll decline this. He'll decline yep. this if he's smart. Illegal motion. Yep, decline it. Yep, that's a good call yeah. by the by the uh, coach from Byron Center. That's a, that is an excellent call by Mark. So it's fourth down now and 11. And it looks like number 41 is going to drop back, and we'll see the first time Avon Cott will be yeah, kicking well. for the Bulldogs, the well, Granville see. Bulldogs. Let's see what he does here. Byron Center's got number three back. That's Isaac Lee. I think we're third and, or fourth and 11. We are. They're going to kick this for sure. Well, here's the snap. It's a good one. Plenty of time. Nice boot. Going to hang nice. Going to go. Oh, that's pretty for Granville. It's going down to the 10. Coaching it along, there we go. Right there, picks it up at the 10-yard line. Well, that's, Not bad. That's exactly what you want to see. You want to see 13 down there. That was Sherry and 85 McKnight, and no uh, Byron Center Bulldog could get anywhere near it. That is a magnificent punt. That was about a 60-yard punt. That's you, a weapon. When you figure, what, 40, 50? Yep. From the, well, from got actually a, where he kicked it. Got a great but. roll, got a great roll, got a little wind push from the hands, and they were in business. <laughs> So, Byron Center with a healthy task here as we're uh, in just into the second quarter with 11.39, first and 10. Ball is on the 10-yard ten ten yard line. line. This will be a task. Granville has not blitzed. They've stayed at home. Spin around out to the 11, maybe one. Well, that tackle is made by number five from Granville. That's Stockwell. He made the tackle. Great. Granville stayed at home. The linebackers have been active, but they have not had to blitz. They've stayed man-to-man -man coverage. We've seen no zone coverage on the pass plays, and they've been only burned once on that touchdown pass. Uh, but other than that, they have stayed at home and controlled the line of scrimmage. So it is now second down and nine. Ball's only on the 11. We're at 11.04 left here in the second quarter. Here comes Byron Center. Let's see if they abandon that run and put it in the air. 
Well, he's kind of in a pistol, not quite a shotgun. And nope, he's going inside. He handed it off. They're going to get out to about the 15. Well, 35 read it extraordinarily well for Granville, and that is Reed Graverson, and Reed just made a great look at that, filled the hole, wrapped, and brought him down. You can't run if your legs aren't moving. So now it's a big one, Andy, third, third and six. six. This is big. I think Byron Center has to put the ball in the air. One They're the not being successful consistently on the ground. One of the problems is they're deep in Bulldog territory, Granville Bulldog territory. Let's see if he rolls out. And he he's is. Gonna, he's going to keep to the it. right. And he's got some running room. He's got a beat man. Man's on the side. He's cutting it down. And he gets him out at the 35-yard line. But a big pickup from the 14 all the way out to the 30-yard line. The Byron Center Bulldog quarterback didn't pass it, kept it himself, made the corner, and big, big yards here, Tom. Well, Tyson Mann ran him down. That doesn't sound like much, but you never know what can happen on the next few plays. So Tyson not giving up, covering oh. the ground, getting him down. Now let's see if the defense can stiffen up or if Byron Center's got a little giddy up and some push. I expect this to stay on the ground. Nope, he's going air, Andy. Good rush. He's going to just get knocked out well, of bounds. Well, number 78 came in. Nick Heisen and forced him out of the pocket. He blew that pass play up. He got a little bit of yardage there. But Nick came in and messed that all up, took the timing away, and forced him out. Great penetration by Nick. Well, I tell you what, Schichtel had a really nice run, though. Uh, when it looked like he was going to be passing from about the 14-yard line down there. Yeah, he's quick. He did. He he's got around quick. that corner. He's quick. When when he got around, he had some giddy-ups. So second down and seven, three-yard gain. Ball's up on the Granville 31. I believe he will be passing here, though. Hmm. He's, he's got a one. little bit unpredictable here, but they seem to indicate going inside. They did. They handed it off. Broke a tackle. Not enough for the first down, however. Got about three. It's going to bring up about third and three, maybe four. Finally wrapped up by Aiden Doran, number 22 from Branville. Finally wrapped him up after he broke that first tackle. What do you do on third and four, Tom? Well, for, for Byer Center, four down territory. I, I don't see any other way around it. This is four down territory, so I think he stays on the ground. He really, I don't think he's going to take a shot and then put it on fourth down to get those four yards. I think well, he's he going to pound. He had a beautiful pass earlier that. Uh, right, but I think he's going to pound twice here. He, he knows he's in a shootout here with Granville if he makes this a mess. I'm, You've got two wide to the left. He sure does. Nobody to the right. He's a left-handed passer. And he's, he's keeping gonna, it. He's keeping it. He's got oh, the he, first down, I believe. Yep, he does. He scooted around it. Or it's going to be real close. He. Uh, Let's see what. They're not moving the sticks. No, not yet. Nobody's made a signal. No, it's going to be fourth and one. Well, they're, you could bet the kitchen sink they're going for it. Well, yeah, we know that. But uh, will Granville shoot the gaps? Well, if you're going to do it now, send the linesbackers. Schichtel talks to his head coach, see, Mark see if they Sisko. Change, see if they change uh, tactics here and go under center. I don't think they will because they probably rarely practice it. No, he's in the shotgun. One to the right. See if he just keeps it himself right up the middle. There Off he goes. the left tackle. And he gets it first down out to the 21, 22. And this time the chains will move. Tackle made by number 58, Landon Hunt for Granville. But you're right, Andy, after the chains move. 8.45 to go here in the first half. It's a Russo's Pizza half. Once again, our senior spotlight player is uh, Logan Stockwell. His last name is Stope Stockwell, as um, mom and dad have uh, uh, had well, it was Jen Jennifer Stockwell was married to Lucas Stope, and now Jennifer's with uh, Scott Stockwell. Back in the pass. He's getting some pressure. A little lob. Oh, what a throw. Gonna what get a great out of bounds. throw. Number four just knocked him out of bounds. Yep. 
Hungerford knocked him out of bounds, but that is a wonderful throw. On the move, just a beautiful pitch. He's got a great arm. He does. He I don't does. know. I'm, I'd feature it more. I mean, that is a beautiful arm. I know you have to have balance, but that is a yeah. magnificent arm, and he created that all by himself. He had two men on the right-hand side. He had either one that he could pick. They're in great shape. Second down and one, ball on the 13. They might take a shot here in the end zone and see once what they can do. Watch him roll to the left here. He's got two men over on the left-hand side. There he is rolling, looking to pass. He's open. Into the end zone. Didn't get it. Just overshot him. Number eight, nice He nice didn't quite defense. put enough air on it, Andy. He had a little bit too much giddy up on it. Is that eight down there? Yes. I don't have an eight on my uh, roster. Are you sure that's an eight? Look and see on your, where's that? Nine, coming back nine. at us, okay, nine. yeah. That's uh, rough. Rough, that's. Cassius rough. Yep. Okay, third and one. Good coverage by by Cassius, good coverage. So now third down and one, gets a little more dice here. They took their shot in the end zone. See if he keeps it himself off that left tackle one he's more time. He's got a lot of room over there, and he's quick. One of the linebackers has to be assigned and hunt him down, oh, going up the middle. He's got it. He's across the 10, across the 5, down to the 4. Uh, we got our first cramp. We got our first cramp. Number six in on the tackle. That was uh, Logan just Sudden got. Uh, and he's got our first cramp. Uh, and we knew that would come tonight. You could see it. He was grabbing his calf muscle right away when he went down. He's trying to stretch that out right now. Is that Logan, number five? Trying it is. To stretch it out. I think he got hit. I think he got hit in the back. Well, he might have got way. hit, but the tackler, I could watch him. I had glasses on him. He was okay. already grabbing his leg when he went down. Okay. So here we go. First and five, ball on the five. Byron Center's been a little creative down here, Andy, with their play calling. Well, they're tight except for uh, one to the right. Uh, there's motion. That's motion on Byron. Yep. Left too early. It's going to cost five yards against uh, Byron Center. That shouldn't hurt him too much, though. No, it just it doesn't give him as much option in terms of run pass. I mean, when he's tighter like that, you know, that linebacker has to honor him because those yep. five yards, he can evaporate in three steps. Well, it was first and goal from the five. Now it's basically first and ten. As you can hear the student section. Well, they're uh, pumping up for their own class. So here we go. First oh, and ten, ball okay. on the ten, seven sixteen on the clock. Byron Center looking to put points on the board. Schichtel looking to pass. Now he's going to go up the middle, and he's going to get pulled down at the 11. His uh, first Stockwell in on the tackle. His first receiver uh, was covered, and then he went to run the ball, and uh, the hole collapsed quickly. Well, Stockwell closed really fast. He made three really quick steps and closed that up. He had nowhere to go. Stumbled a little bit when he saw Stockwell coming, and uh, that took away any advantage he would have. So, second and 11. For as good as they look, they've all of a sudden had a couple of bad plays in a row here where they just haven't, they came off the rails, don't look sharp. Let's see what he does here. I still think, Andy, you're right. At some point, he's gonna run wide left. Logan's cheating on that side, coming after him. He's got a, he's got a tackle and a sack. Logan. Number five, Logan Stockwell. Well, Stockwell's dad is Scott Stockwell. He uh, graduated with my older son, and he is now the principal at Hopkins Middle School. Well, Logan just made three great steps, forced it inside, which was his job, and then did above his job and made the tackle. Logan's got three little brothers that are, uh, I'm sure, watching him right now. Gavin is an eighth grader, a 13-year-old at Granville Middle School. He's got a second grade uh, brother, Gibson, seven years old at West uh, um, Elementary. And then Cullen is his three-year-old that just adores him. Third down and 17. Big play for Byron. Inside pass. One Ooh, move. Sidestepped uh, Logan. Yep. Couldn't get him, but it's going to bring up. It's going to bring fourth and... Um, what do we got? Fourth and about four. Fourth and Tyson Mann tripped him up. You're going to have fourth down, Andy. Ball's going to be spotted on a bell. Oh, the eight. Okay. Yeah. About a eight-yard line. 
This is going to get dicey. It's been a long time while we've been down at this end of the field. Yeah, and Byron's, they're going to go for a field goal, Andy. They're going to go for a field goal. That's interesting. Teeing it up on about the 19-yard line. He'll spot it on, on I'm sorry, 14-yard 14 line. 14 yard line. It's Never, blocked. Nope, it's get blocked. out of there, boys. Get out of there. It's blocked. And that was an interesting call. And Stockwell's going to run it now, but I think. No, it already. I think it was in the end zone. I don't think you can take it out of the end zone. Can you? Well, oh, that's not Stockwell. That's number nine. That's Cassius Rupp. If you punt it into the end zone, isn't that a touchback? Well, off from a kick, it's blocked, but the official in the end zone signaled down. Yeah. And then the player stopped, and then he took off. Now, technically, yeah. In high school, you, once it crosses the end line, it's done. It's done. Yeah, it would go out to the 20, and that's where they have it. There we go. That's what I thought, because um, he's running it, and he, I'm going, he can't run it out of the end zone. No, nope, just a little confusion. So that's so why they're great, putting it at the 20-yard great, line. Great defensive stand here by the Granville Bulldogs. Now they're in control, 444. They're going to look to march down the field. Quick some, hitter oh, stuffed yeah. by number 60. Number 60 <laughs> from Byron Center. That's came in and just stuffed it. That's Copco. Aaron Burgess. He just drilled Copco right oh, in the numbers. Oh, man, did he come across. He, Copco didn't know what hit him. No, my name is Mr. Burgess. How do you do? That was a tackle. He so. stood him up. <laughs> it was kind of fun to watch. Well, you know that doesn't happen very often in this Granville <laughs> offense that a running back gets stood up. Second and nine, ball on the 21, 410 left here in the second quarter. Carson Smith, handoff. Big hole. Sidestep. There's yeah, a, we got a penalty. There's a hold. Yep. Got a penalty. Being pushed out of bounds is man, but I think you're going to have a, uh, a hold out there. Tungate pushed him out of bounds, but I believe you're correct, Andy. That's coming back. Dillard is our uh, back judge. He's holding. Yep. Granville. That's coming back. That. Well, that might explain the big hole. Well, I think it was a linebacker that was holding, or um, a linebacker was getting held. Right. Well, he didn't mean it. Oh, he didn't? No. So is that? No, I think, well. Is that just do over then? Uh, no, I think we just, we'll let it go this time, but next time he gets that because he didn't mean it. I think we should just mark it back 10 yards mm -hmm. and do it over. All right, let's do that. So let's go back 10. And then we'll do it. We'll give him a break and go back 10. Yep, and we'll just do that whole thing over again. Now get out of my way, gentlemen, because you're going to be back a little bit further than what you'd like. It was from the hold, so right. that, that was a little bit less. And they're yep. going to see it at the 12 now. So the ball's 17. on the 17. 17. Ball's on the 17. You got to pass. He's open. He's got number eight on the outside. He's going to go out of bounds with it with 3.50 to go. That might be a late there's, hit. Gonna That's going to be a flag. late hit. That's going to be a late hit. He was clearly. But he, but he didn't mean it. Yeah, well, I know that. But so unfortunately, that was about three steps out of bounds. So we're going to add maybe 15 to the we're end. We're going to add 15 one? to the end. That was a nice uh, play by uh, by Carson Smith rolling to the right. And, Beautiful uh, pass. Passing, yeah. Beautiful route. He ran a great route, and he put the ball right in stride. And beautiful run. That should take it all the way to the midfield, to the 50-yard line. Yep. He's going to march it right on up. That hurt Byron Center. That little shot out of bounds hurt Byron Center. And that gives the Bulldogs with 350 well, left on the clock here plenty of time to continue to do what they always do, saunter up to the line. Well, you know, that makes it, it makes it real easy for the umpire, Jeff Green. He doesn't have to run it up there. He can just walk it up and at 83 degrees out. The referees need to uh, have a drink of water, too. Coner, big hole, big hole. Going to get knocked out at no. No, nope, he's, he's out of bounds. He stepped, he, stepped he stepped out. He stepped out. We've got 343. Number four, Toongate actually forced him out and got him to step out of bounds. But what a magnificent trap block on the right side by the Granville Bulldogs. That was beautiful. So we've got. I think we had a blocker over there as number five. Uh, that's uh, once again our senior spotlight player, Logan Stope Stockwell. He's been playing football for 11 years. Not only is he the outside linebacker, but he's also a tight end. 
and he's been on the varsity for two years now. Little Carson Smith. Oh, he's going deep. Oh, oh what a reception. Oh, oh catch my. All the way down to the one-yard line. It's the tip drill. Brady Brett, I think Brady thought he had it picked. It bounced, and he came up with that football, Andy. It's that number, was something to see. Is that number, is that eight or, uh, we don't have an eight. Who is that? Nine, Cassius Roof? Got to be Cassius. That was, <laughs> that was magnificent. Smith put that in between two oh. Byron Center Bulldogs. And anything could have happened. It could have been picked. It could have been. Could have been caught. Now Granville at 318, sitting pretty. Six. Sedinsky. He's oh, in. in the, for a touchdown. Tyson Mann, give him another touchdown. Granville with a great series after the missed field goal, marching down the field and doing it in short order. Up 30 to seven with 308 left here in the second quarter. Or trusty uh, Jeff Goodyear saying that that was number six. That's Easton Sedinsky. Well, here comes oh, Granville that's for, who that is. for the point after. Oh, it looks like Sedinsky is wearing number eight. He's number six in our book or our roster. He's going to keep it. It's on his hip. He hit the hit pylon. The pylon. Is that Should be in. Carson Smith keeps it himself for two. We've got a Granville player coming up lame. Well, that's, got caught up in it and rolled that's there. Carson. Uh, it's yeah, he rolled his, rolled his ankle there. Hopefully he can walk that off. Well, he He's, touched the pile on. That means it's a cross. And it's 32 to 7. Unbelievable first half of football. Unbelievable first half of football. Granville with a huge stop, the missed field goal, which is a curious call because it never had a chance. I think they would have had a better chance well, going on it. offensive. I know, but yeah, I know. watching him kick early pre-game, oh, pre he, he wasn't even close. Well, and even that extra point that he kicked wobbled over yeah. the... Uh, I would have put it in just, the hands of my quarterback. Cleared the, cleared the bar there. Curious call, but now it's 32 to seven. 308 left here in the second quarter. Granville in control. Ball teed up on the 40. Closest to us now on this hash mark. And Byron Center can't do anything but get, get points and get them fast. So let's see what they do when the dial up on the run back. He'll probably pooch it again somewhere around the 30. He does. A little deeper. Chance for a run back. He's going to take it all the way out to the 45-yard yeah, line, 43-yard line. Connor Morse in on the tackle, he but he was... He didn't get it as high this time. He didn't time. get it as high, and he got it deeper, which allows for blocking to form. But deeper isn't... Uh, necessarily the, better. I was going to say deeper is not the 5-yard line or the 3. Nope. It was like the 25, well, the yeah. 20, probably the 20. It outkicked his coverage. Yes, he did. So, 3.02 on the clock. Down 32 to seven. Byron Center here needs to dial something up and dial it up fast because they're going to need points here. Because uh, Granville is. Well, Schickel's going to the shotgun here. Keeps it himself. Gets out to the 45. I'm surprised he kept that with three minutes. I, you got to be passing this Mason ball. Mason Albrecht in on the tackle. Along with uh, also number 76. Well, Logan Stockwell, our senior spotlight player of the game, played some travel ball, but it was AAU ball at the NBA, uh, so ba some basketball there. His favorite class is the audio-visual class. His favorite teacher, is this not sucking up when he says his favorite teacher is the head football coach? No, that's fine. Okay, and his GPA. Yeah. you got to work it. An impressive GPA at 3.5. Good for him. Going deep, open, beautiful pass. Nice catch. Stays in bounds. Clock should be running. Clock was stopped. Oh, for the change to go. Drew Hungerford on the uh, tackle. You know, at this point, Andy, with a score like it is, they got to put it in the hands of their quarterback. He's got to stop messing around here. This kid can throw. Yes. I want him running out, and if he doesn't have a pass, he can tuck it and go. I mean, you can work a run in here and there, but you got to put it in the hands of the talent, and that seems to be in this offense well, where your got talent the, is. Granville's got that middle clogged up. 
There he is, back to pass. Left-handed. Oh, that's a floater. Wide open. And he's got him. He got him again. That was, you know, it floated, but he got it to the open man. He's still fighting for he yardage. Would, They're finally blowing it dead. He was not down. That he was, was a, still that was fighting. A, that was a can of corn, though, in uh, baseball terms. Oh, absolutely. Anybody could have gone up Stockwell there and intercepted was, it. Stockwell was on the bottom of that, but he just kept wrestling, and it wouldn't go down. No. So 134, uh, they've good got. Shape. Yeah, they're in really good shape. Ball on the 19. They got all their timeouts, so they have a golden opportunity to put points on the board. I'd go a little bit quicker. You're down to 120. Well, again, I think I'd move this offense faster, and I'm not messing around with the run. I'm rolling them out, but I'm not messing around with the run. It just doesn't. Schichtel moving to the left. He's got the left arm. He's going to get oh, that drilled at the 20-yard line. a great tackle by 35. That's going to keep the clock running at 102. They got to call a timeout. Graverson, that is a wonderful pursuit tackle. Clock is still running. I, he's got to call timeout here. He got a good chance to score. It's down to 50 seconds. I'm confused. You got three timeouts in your pocket. You need points. Yeah. Why wouldn't you call a timeout uh, and dial up a play? I have no idea. Strange. 30, 37 seconds. Schichtel looking to pass. That's three plays that they lost. He's going to run now. He's not going He's anywhere. He's going to go to 21. Somebody got to call a timeout on Byron Center. 58 and on the tackle. There's a flag now London at the end. Hunt. Now there's a, probably an unsportsmanlike. This ought to get good. I think this is going to go against Graham. Bill. Yeah, I, it's getting a little chippy. If it is, that's 15. I am thoroughly it, confused, though, on Byron Center. That's, well, outside, I, that's outside the 20, is it not? So... Yeah. It'd be 15 instead of half the distance? Correct. Well, Suggs is talking to you know, automatic first down, but Donovan, I, the referee. I'm thoroughly confused on Byron's process. Hudsonville is uh, trailing Orchard Lake St. Mary 9-7. to seven. Wow, they're hanging in there. It's in the second quarter. That's a tough game for Hudsonville. It's against number nine, Caddis, Cassius Ruff. Yep, Ruff. But it must there must have gone uh, half the distance or ten yards. Because uh, timeout. Unsportsmanlike is fifteen yards, but they only went ten. Because he took Byron. it from the twenty-one down to the eleven. Now you're taking the timeout. The clock's already stopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Curious. Because this clock is not going to start until... No, now the clock is stopped, and now you take the timeout. Unless you had, had two timeouts mailed. you could have used, and there still would be probably 44 seconds on the clock had you burned those timeouts. Well, let's look at that senior spotlight player of the game, uh, Logan Stockwell. I asked him if I was invited to his uh, graduation party. He said yes. Bring so, a gift. So um, I don't have to have my normal uh, reply if he says no. And um, his plans for next year are to uh, play basketball at college. I know he's being recruited at Olivet. He uh, wants to go to school to study the business side of things. His extracurricular activities, he works at Jimmy John's. He is a baseball umpire and Tom, I don't know if you know this, but he is recently registered at the MHSAA to uh, umpire baseball and softball for next spring. Good for him. So third down and one, 24 seconds on the clock. Byron Center finally decided to talk about it. Let's see what they dialed up there in the conversation on the sideline. And remember, it's and third is, down. This is funny too, third and one after unsportsmanlike didn't get an automatic first down. Oh, he threw it behind him. Oh, they're saying he caught it. He pulled it in. He pulled it in. I thought for sure he didn't get it. What a great pair see, of What a great hand. Number. See the number on that if you can. What a great hand. He grabbed it and pulled it in. Number 23. Yep. Unbelievable catch. 23 is Blake Otto. O -T -T -O -W. He threw it behind him, and I thought there was no way. He held it with one hand, pushed it against his hip, and maintained control. Unbelievable. Here's the try for point after. Great series for Byron Center with a lot of adversity. That one's and good. And he got her. 
32-14, and Byron Center does something to keep them in the game. Who was the uh, kicker there? Didn't get it. Interesting, and still 19 seconds left on the clock. I guess they knew what they were doing on the sidelines. Well, I guess. I guess they knew what they were doing. It's not what I would have done, but. So, Byron Center will tee it up. Let's we'll see what kind of kick they do. If they kick it deep or if they squib it down, what do they do with this? Try to chew up some time so that they don't allow Granville anything to get back on them. Obviously, they'll play their safety deep. Well, if you kick it to man, he can just run the entire field and take it 82 yards like he did on the opening kickoff. I don't think they want to do that. I, if I'm Byron uh, Center, I'm either putting this high in the air or I'm line driving it. Squip kick line drive. I want as much confusion as possible on who's going to get this football. Number seven is Wubin. Alex Wubin is teeing it up. I don't know if he was doing kicking, though. So here we go. He's listed as a quarterback. Yeah, he line drive. Nice bounce, Great however. scoop. Oh, he's going to. Oh. oh, nice cutback. Uh, yep. Well done. Number five in on the tackle for Byron Center. That's Tyler Summers. Number 10 on the, uh, on the uh, ball. That's Jackson Sanchez. And Granville has 14 seconds. Quick hitter up the middle and run for a while. You well, can you score know, again. You know with the wing tee, they're going to do that. They're going to try that quick hitter or a counter. And remember, they still have two timeouts. So if they want to really drag this, they can do it if they're snapping those timeouts quick. Depends on, all depends on this first play. This first play sets up everything else. Smith under center. Second man across. No, it's third man. It's going to go right out of bounds. That's Tyson Mann gets across the 50, down to the 49. I'll tell Eight you. up uh, five seconds. That is a smart football player. Not yeah. only did Mann know what he had, know where he was, didn't waste it by making contact, just scampered out of bounds. It's just a smart football play. So, nine seconds left on the clock. You notice who gave him a nice block over there? I did. That was number five, Stockwell. He's still working hard. He's playing both sides of the line. He's a tight end here on offense. He's an outside linebacker. Let's see what he does as far as some blocking. Puts his head down. That one didn't go. Nope. Ball's okay. loose, but he's down. Ball yeah, came out I late. they're going to let the clock run out, and it's going to take us to a yep. Russo's Pizza halftime. Our halftime score. 32 to 14, it's all Bulldogs, in this case, the Granville Bulldogs. We'll take time out and have some Russo's Pizza here on WCET-TV. I'm Andrew Kovac with my partner tonight, Tom Byston. In the house is Jeff Goodyear. We'll see you after halftime. It's time to experience the flavor of Russo's Pizzeria. Pickup, delivery, and catering available. Proudly serving you since 1953. With generations of recipes to satisfy any craving, we're ready to make your next meal. Call us up or stop in the corner of 44th and Burlingame to get your piece of the action today. My name is Todd Ponstein from Interspace Mini Storage in Jenison, Michigan. And it's our goal here at Interspace to provide you, our customers, with clean, secure, dry, well-lit, personalized storage facilities. What makes us unique is that we're family owned and operated, and it is our goal to put our customers' needs ahead of our own. We will even come out sometimes on Saturdays to let people in and out of units. We have great rates, and we even offer discounts for six months paid in advance or more. We have many different size units, ranging from as small as a five by 10 to as large as a 12 by 50, and almost anything in between. We don't have contracts. You rent right from the day that you move in to the day that you move out. So you don't pay for any time that you don't use. Of course, all of our customers have 24 seven access to their unit. So if you have storage needs, come see us at Interspace. Interspace Mini Storage for all life has in store. Welcome back to Granville High School, home of the Bulldogs in this Thursday night. Labor Day weekend extravaganza on WCET TV. It's also a Russo's Pizza Night, and we're spotlighting a senior from the Granville Bulldogs. It's uh, Logan Stockwell Stope, and or Stope Stockwell. And at halftime, it's 32-14 in favor of Granville. 
I'm Andrew Kovac coming to you 92 steps above the field with my partner, Tom Bice. Tom, quick well, replay here, of the first half. Well, here we go. We're going to get underway here. Granville kicking off. They had received and ran the opening kickoff, so Byron Center gets it to start it off here. They're dancing around from the It's number 19 10. with the football. He gets across the 25. Out to the 25. Hunter there, Ford in on the tackle. Oh, the first half, Andy, was a track meet. It was a most interesting game. Uh, Granville putting up 32, but Byron Center came back at the end to put another score on to make it 32-14. Yeah, they so, scored with 19 seconds to go. So here we go, Byron Center with the football. If they can march down and put a score on the board here, we'll have ourselves quite an entertaining first half. Granville, of course, is looking for a stop. I think we're going to have a penalty here. They have a flag yeah. on the on the play, and it's going to go against Byron Center. So it's either a hold or a push in the back. And he's going to march that off, and that There's is five. not a five-yarder. There's ten. Yeah. That must be a hold. Yeah. More than likely Oops. a hold for a ten-yard penalty. See what he um, he signals here. So they're going to change footballs now because you got to have the Byron Center football. And the umpire had called the penalty, so yeah. more than likely a hold. So first and 10, ball on the 17. We'll start out with 11.53 left. Byron Center looking to score here and tighten this one up. Well, Schichtel is in the shotgun. He's got man in motion. He gonna keeps it himself up the middle. And he's gonna get first down territory. Yeah, big, big play there. 10 yards. I think if he does this too many more times, they're going to put a linebacker on him and say, just keep an eye on him. Well, I think you have to. I, I think you have to take one of those two in the middle and uh, assign him there, uh, you know, for hunger forward in on the tackle, but not, just not soon enough, Andy, just not soon yeah. enough. You got to trust your outside linebackers and your uh, wide, uh, your defensive right. wide outs to cover the Two split to the right. But great start for Byron Center here. First and 10. Ball's already up on the 27. Man in motion. Doesn't get it. Schichtel on the left-hand side up the middle. He's going to have one to beat. And he's across midfield down to the 45 to the 43-yard line. Stockwell kind of rode him down there. He just got on him and rode him until he could finally get him off, just like a rodeo play. <laughs> 32-14, again, uh, Byron Center can score here. It changes the complexion of this football game. You've got to take Schichtel's legs out. You can't ride him. Well, they're going to have to. I, I, they haven't shown us anything else that has been consistent other than his play. Right. Whether it's his arm or his legs, that's what's gotten them where they've scored. First and 10. He's looking to pass. Now he's going to run. He's going up the middle. And again, three guys take him down. But he gets out to the 35. So he's eating up some yards real quick. Really fast, 58, finally brought him down, Landon Hunt. But very clearly here at the beginning of this third quarter, Byron Center has put themselves on the shoulders of their quarterback, and that's how they're going to run this thing. They did not do that much in the first half. He shined because he got them the scores, but they did not ride him as heavy as what I thought they should have. We talked about that, that some of the plays were curious that were being called from the Byron Center sideline. But now... Second down and two, ball on the 35, and he's put a march together here. And like I said, a score makes this a whole different football game. He's gone from the 17 all the way out to midfield and then some. Looking to pass. No, he no, no, handed down. off. He handed off. down. That was number 20. He's hurt. He can't quite get up. 28 coming, finally getting up off the ground there for Byron Center. And that's uh, Jason Seavey. They're going to move the chains, call it a first down. Well, he got just enough there. He took a little beating. He's going to go off the sidelines and catch his breath a little bit because he got beat up a little bit, but yes, he got he the did. first down. Nine minutes, 39 seconds. Clock is running here in the third quarter. It's a Russo's Pizza night. You call Mike Russo at 530-3200. At the end of the game, we'll tell you who that Russo's Pizza player of the game is. Keeps it himself, designed to hang on to it. He's across. He's gone. Spins, bounces, and in. 33 yards out. No flags. Boy, the young man made a statement, didn't he, Andy? That's Tungate. Tungate was a runner, took it, and just went with it. That was not Schichtel. No, Tungate. What a great run. 
33 yards and in for the score. Nice call, great blocking by Byron Center's front five. And they're gonna kick for the extra point. Kinda getting set up here. Changing personnel, something's not quite right. We're running personnel in and out of here like there's no tomorrow, so they're a little confused on what they're gonna do. I believe they're going for two, Andy. First time, they're going for two. Byron Center in the shotgun, going for two. This is Schichtel. He's looking to pass. Just missing him. Now he's going to throw he's it. not going to get the end zone. No, he's going to be down. Great completion, but it was just short. So no PAT. No PAT. I like the I like the call though. I like him going for it. He needs points. He needs them quick. And he's changed the football game with that first drive. Yeah, 32 to 20. It's 12 uh, points, and we got a game again. We got a football game on our hands, and that's how fast it changes. That first series changed everything. They put it on the shoulders of their quarterback, and he brought him down. And then landed Tungate with the run. That was a, uh, what do they call that, a wildcat. Yep, and Landon just took it. He broke a couple <laughs> tackles, great blocking, and he's in the end zone. So now Byron Center puts it up on the 40. Granville with the first time really tonight with a little bit of pressure on him that their offense has to do something good. Tyson Mann drops back deep at about the 10 yard line. He ran the opening kickoff back in 11 seconds and um, Smith took the two points conversion in. It was eight to nothing at 11.49. They're kicking it deep. He's and gonna Mann get a shot. It. He's across the 20, 25, 30. He's gonna spin around. This time they get, bring him down just short of the 35, and that's where Carson Smith will bring out the crew, and the crew will try to go in for another Granville Bulldog touchdown. Drew Belinsky, number 83, got a hand in there and brought him down, tripped up the leg. Granville with good field position. First and 10, 908 left here in the third quarter. Here comes Granville. They're going to look to grind this out, Andy. They don't want to do anything too fast. If they get lucky, fine. Second man through. Pushes Boy, it across. Down eight, yeah, eight yards on that opening. Maybe as much as nine. Zylstra in on the tackle, number 22. Man with Jackson the carry. Zylstra. They're going to say eight. A good eight. That was a good run. That's what Granville's looking to do. If they can repeat that, three out of four downs, they are going to be happy. Well, they need two for the first down. He can do anything right here. Yeah, this is one of those rare times in that uh, in the wing tee that you can kind of get cute. Smith under center. Second man on the left-hand side, Tyson uh, or uh, Perry. 34 wrapped him up and brought him down. That's Justin Reichart. Reichart, and he brought him down, but not until he gained the yardage Pass Jayden, the line to gain. Jaden Terry. I think I said Tyson, but it's Jaden Terry. He's a freshman. He gets the first down, and he's they're a, knocking at the 50-yard line. They're at the 41 right now. He's a good running back, Andy. Yeah. He's got great balance, and he sees the hole. Well, and he follows his blockers. Yes, he does. Jumps in that hole. He's got it again, I, I think. It's across the 50 down to the 48. I think that's Jaden Terry again. That's 17. Nope, that's 17. That's Tyson Mann. Yep. Great run. I mean, he, he kept chugging and kept moving. But look at six more yards on first down. But that's exactly what Granville wants. That punch of four to six, four to six, four to six. Keeps everybody back on their heels, keeps the defense honest. Throw, throw in eight once in a while. Yep, and it just chews up time. This is a great response after the touchdown by the Granville offense, just to control. We're Tom. at 7, 720. Smith. Keeping it. Keeps it on his hip. He's got a blocker. He's going to go out of bounds at the 45, just short of the first down. It'll bring up third and one. Forced out of bound by Jackson Zylstra again. Nice putting the ball on the hip, though. Yeah, he does. Does Somebody's down there on the sidelines, Andy. That's I think it's Smith. 
Okay, he just didn't get up, and I, I'm going to try to get a look here through the through the players. I think he got. Uh, I think somebody fell on top of him again. Yeah. We don't have replay tonight. I, I'm thinking it's cramps. You think so? Yeah, he. They're they're trying to stretch him out a little bit. They taking a timeout. I don't know if they took a timeout or we got a timeout because we have an injured player on the field. He's still on the field of play. He's partially out of bounds, partially on the field. Okay. Well, it looks like number nine is getting a couple snaps. That's Cassius Ruff. He's your backup quarterback. He got his leg up. Yeah, it's a cramp. They're trying to stretch him out and get that. So he's going to get up here. And he'll need a he'll I need think, to be out of play. I was say he'll have to sit out one play. Yeah, he'll have to sit out a play. But you could tell it was one of those instantaneous. He grabbed it and just started screaming. Yeah. Same thing when you find out your wife got a new credit card. <laughs> so here come the bulldogs. You wake up and start screaming. <laughs> yeah, you wake up and start screaming. Is that Third, is that when you found out she got it or when you got the first uh, statement? It all goes into one movement. Oh, okay. Third and two, ball on a 46, 657 well, Granville with an impressive response here. Cassius Ruff is under the center. He hands it off. And we got the first down and then some out to the 41-yard line. Yeah, big number 17 with the ball again. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Carson Smith is coming back in. Hey, number 42, Devin. Champlin in on the tackle for Byron Center. That's Devin's first tackle tonight. Did a nice job there to fill it and make the tackle. He's coming back in without any limp or anything. So No, I like I said, I think it's just it's that time of the game, oh, Andy, yes. where they start dehydrating. They've sat for halftime. Those muscles have started to contract a little bit, and now you're stretching them back out again. Sometimes well, they bark. It was 83 at game time. It's 79 right now. There's your and freshman. He got popped a little bit there. Yeah, he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Again, that was a slowly developing. When they're going with him, he's on the far left side, and he's cutting back across to the right. And by that time, uh, Byron Center's closing down that hole. Well, Aaron Burgess, number 60, he's not a really big kid. He plays on that defensive line. He can't be much more than 5'10", and he's, a, he's strong. What number is he? Number 60 for Byron Center. Aaron Burgess. So yeah, here we go. Yeah, they don't give us a, a height and weight for those guys. Big hole. Big hole. Tyson Mann barrels across down to the 30. That's going to move the chains. We'll have a new line to gain as the He's Bulldogs. cramping up again. He's just got that's, it right now, and that is so hard to get rid of when those, when those muscles cramp. I'll tell you, the left side of the Granville offense did such a beautiful job on that trap, and he hit it at exactly the right moment and then dragged it. But he is struggling with that's, muscle. That's Tyson Mann that's uh, pulling his foot back. Yeah, he is struggling with it. Did, was he having problems in the first? They were. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just been dehydration. I mean, they're going through a boatload of oh, fluid right now. Tell me about it. I was down on that field when the game started, came back up here sweating away. Carson Taco. Oh, that's nice. a pretty Big run. I mean, that is a pretty run. That's number three, I believe. Yes, it is. And that, that would was, be uh, Copco. That was a magnificent run. Now we got another Bulldog, one of the linemen. Uh, 57 there. Becker, he's pulled up limping. They're just coming off from this, and they're starting to stretch those muscles out, and they've contracted during halftime, and they lose a little bit of moisture and a little bit of, if you will, potassium and salt, and all of a sudden they start screaming. We'll have to see if they keep them keep them hydrated. So here we go. It's kind of hard to hydrate when you're already dehydrated. And that's too. true. There Big hole. Man's got it this time. He's across the 20, down to the 19, and that should be enough for another Granville Bulldog first down. And as you said, when we first started this series of downs, Granville is going to just methodically march down the field, and so far that's what they're doing. Yep. Jeb, Devin Chaplin again in on the tackle. Well, it's He's 30, been active. It's 32 to 20 with 4:15 to go in the third, and uh, no panic on Granville's uh, no, side of the ball. This is pure maturity on this drive. This time through, let's see. He's getting wrapped up. That's number six. Positive yardage of about three. Second and seven. Second and seven That's now. Easton, Easton Sedinsky, or. 
Yeah, second and seven. Ball's on the 19. Uh, uh, ball's number, now down on the 16. Was that number six that had the ball? Yes. So they've got that as Easton Sedinsky. Yeah, this is impressive, though, by Granville. The maturity of this drive, and that's what I'm going to call it, maturity, of being, you know, having a touchdown scored on you, having the game get right back into the point where you could have a problem, they have controlled it. That offense has been beautiful. Another good hole. Up the middle. Great leg drive. Down to the 13. So it's a pickup of three. It's going to bring up 19 in on the tackle. That's Luke Laska for Byron Center. But again, uh, four. the hole's there. The running back's hitting the hole, and they're not going down on the first hit. It's taking two, three, sometimes four Byron Center players to bring down these running backs. That is impressive. Well, look at Smith to have a quick hitter to the first man through. They've been picking up their most yards on the first man. Second and third man have been getting decent yards, but not like the first man. See if he hands it off to the first one through. He did. Counter. He's in, Andy. He's going to. He scored. Oh, there's a flag at the end. There is a flag. That could be a hold as number three. We'll have to see what that's about. We got another player from Granville that's pulling up a little bit lame. That's Kupka. Yeah. He's got, got a cramp. Flag from the uh, referee usually indicates a hold. They have not indicated touchdown. This is going to get marched. Cop goes coming off. Yep. I think they got a hold on that. It's a one. hold. Well, it's going to march back 10. That was a beautiful run. It was. Chewing up time here in this third quarter, which is another oh, tremendous, is. tremendous show by this Granville offense. Just to respond after a touchdown calmly, no panic. Unfortunate penalty. The referee, I did not see him give a signal. Did you? No, I didn't. Well, it's going to bring up third and 14 now. Kept it. S Smith. Passed Open. It. Man, going to get knocked out of bounds at the 15. What do you have for? What do you have for uh, fourth and six? I roll him out again. I like him. He rolls out. He throws a nice yeah. ball. He's very calm, and. We got two downs. He's got two no, downs. Fourth down. Is it fourth down? Fourth okay. And well, fourth then, and five. Okay. I'd roll him out again. Yep. Wide side. And if he can throw, throw. If he not, put it in the arm and go. I don't see anybody coming out to kick. No, I'd almost take a timeout and really dial this one in because uh -oh. this is an important play. I think they know. Well, student section coming to life. Smith under center. Kept it. Open. Down to about the three. And it's going to be enough for the first down. Nice pass. And he pulled up a little bit. That's number number six, Sedinsky. Boy, was that a pretty throw, Andy. He can do it. There's Calm. Set up. Nice. Put it right on the money. What a great call. Two receivers, one deep, one underneath. Just really nicely done. The beautiful, beautiful play. So here we go. First down. Ball is on the three, so it's first and goal. That's a six, but it looks like an eight. It does. But it's Sedinsky. First ball or first down. Didn't waste Ten. any time. Touchdown. Touchdown. From three Didn't yards. Didn't waste out. any time. I didn't. Who's who's on that? Touchdown. Who is that? Seven. I'm, I was looking. I'm sorry. I'm looking at 78. He's pulling up with a cramp. I didn't see who it was, but with a minute 18 to go, Granville on the board here in the third quarter from three yards out. Granville's going to kick, Andy. That surprises This is a me. fun night. They're 18. We're going to try a point after Why with a foot. Why would they go up by 20? I like this. Oh, plenty of leg. Strzok gets it right through. Plenty of leg. Right through. Isaac Strock. I like that. That's 19 point difference. Why would you not go up by 20? Well, because now they go up next time. It's get two. That puts it 21 and then the six. Oh. But a great offensive yeah. response. I mean, after giving up the touchdown, the offense comes on the field, grinds out a wonderful touchdown. They get the PAT, make the statement right back and chew up 
the rest of the third quarter. Well, Granville's wearing the uh, jerseys that they wore in 1996 when they were the Class A state champions. Yep. And this is the first time, like you said at the beginning of the game, that the Granville Bulldogs have played the Byron Center Bulldogs. You would think, being right next door to each other, that uh, Byron Center would have... At some point. Yeah, sometime. Somebody would have said, hey, there's a team, let's have them. I know I used to be the community ed director in Byron Center, and I lived here in Granville, and people asked me, uh, where my loyalty was. I said, I'm a Bulldog fan. There you go. And this is it tonight. It's the Bulldogs. It's wow, with 118, Byron Center's going to get it back. This should be a wild end to this football game. And it's, uh, That's what he wants on the height. And cut him down right at the 30. Yep. Maybe if he rolled a little bit, he's going to get to the 30. Nope, they're saying right on the 30. So Byron Center now trails by 19 with a minute 13 in the third quarter. I'm Andrew Kovac with my partner Tom Bice. Jeff uh, Goodyear is in the background talking to the sports director. Ben Fridzma with all around good guy. Brian Waring on the camera this second half. Ben uh, operated the camera in the first half. We have a new uh, station manager. I guess he's got the night off. Kurt um, Wilson had a nice uh, Retirement party for Alan Dodds here about two, three weeks ago. Ooh, ducks underneath. And oh, he's close. loose now. He's, he's loose now. Running room now. Now it's a running game. Well, that's There's, number There are four. two Granville's Ton Bulldogs on, on the ground. One just because he missed, and the other's pulling up because he's lame. Well, what about the one in the, at the 30-yard line? Is that because he missed? No, the 30 is a, a muscle. 78 uh, from Granville is the gentleman who just crashed, Heisen. Nick crashed, but yeah, he missed the got, quarterback. We've got uh, the trainer, Mike Seeger, right at the 30 on the uh, out, of play, out of bounds. There's two Bulldogs down right now with cramps. Yeah, Nick had the quarterback in his sights. Yeah, he did. He was wrapping him up. It was going to be a Christmas present, and he just didn't yep. tie the bowl when he slipped away. Yeah, and he got a big, uh, big gain got, all the way across. Well, yeah, and that, remember that was uh, Tungate who had that. He's the one who just made that run. So with a minute left here in the third quarter, 39-20, Granville leads Byron Center. Both teams have all their timeouts. Well, It'll be first and 10. Ball will be on the 42-yard line for Byron Center. That is a big play. Mike Seeger is working on somebody right on the sideline. Do you see a number on that? Number three, maybe? Well, I don't we got know. more people pulling up lame. And it looks like, is that Siegel out there? Stiegel? The coach? No. I think not. it's number nine on the ground there on the sidelines okay. for, for Granville. Now, Coach Eric that's Stiegel, rough. Stiegel just walked away from the, uh, the huddle. 82. Who's 82? Let's see. Yep. And he's trying to come off the field after he got stretched out. Well, he, he definitely was cramping. Yep. So we're going to get some fresh legs in there, well, which is probably a good idea because we got a couple of guys just can't get those muscles stretched. 82 is not, is there a 62 maybe? 62 is Carson Kupchak. All right. I think, I think so those eights in our first and ten look the same. Ball on the 42. Back to play here. Handoff, up the middle. Still on his feet. Oh, we got like six, six Granville oh. trying to pull him. That's close, that's, that's, just short of the first down. That's a definite scrum right there. That was a, rock, a rugby job. It looked like it. Byron Center here with a with a big play and an answer to Granville's. Quickly back to the line. Score. Quickly to the line. Yeah, some urgency finally from Byron Center. Well, they've seen everybody cramping on Granville. Might as well take advantage of it. Nah, it's going to be motion. Yeah. Um, We've got two more Grant. We got one more Granville guy down with a cramp. Schichtel uh, took off too quick. Well, whenever that happens, he has to come out for one play, but it does slow down Byron Center. 62 is coming back in. The assistant trainer. I don't have his number or his name, he is now going out. As Mike Seeger 
has two guys right here in front of us, Tom. Yeah. Do you see Everybody's these? working on everybody here. What do we got down here, these two? They're, they're working definitely on hamstring uh, cramps yeah. or calves. Yeah. Either one are, they hurt. Trust me, I've woke up in the middle of the night with them. They make, they make you sit up. Well, we're going to have a timeout on the field with 28 seconds left. Ball's going to stay right at the 39-yard line. It'll be second down and seven well, while when we do that, comes out. Let's talk a little bit about our Russo's Pizza senior spotlight player, Logan uh, Stope Stockwell. When I asked him what his favorite movie was, he told me it was The Dark Knight, the Batman movie. His favorite restaurant? Well, he works at Jimmy John's, so he figured he'd be loyal and say Jimmy John's is his favorite restaurant. If he could go to dinner with anybody alive or dead right now, he chose Kobe Bryant. Why? He just likes him. He liked the way Kobe played basketball. Fair his, enough. His best friend is Tyson Nisbet. They've been uh, friends for seven years, and uh, why? They have similar interests. Here back we go. To, back to play. Big hole. There's a flag, however. I think we got a hold in the middle. We probably do. 41 made the tackle, even cat. That, let's came, see. In, that came in from the... Uh, from the referee? Yeah. Well, that's going to go back. Hold, yep. We'll mark it off 10. Grand 17 goal. seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, it's, we been, were it's been a crazy third quarter, We, we were flying through the third quarter until the last minute. Yeah. And then we ground to a halt here with, with some injury timeouts. and. Well, I think uh, Coach Eric Stiegel might have learned something for uh, practice this week. And I think it's called, let's talk about hydration. And you don't hydrate on the day of the game. No, you start about three days before. <laughs> or just keep hydrating all week long. You so got, here we go. You got practice every day. Yep. You know, and you're going to lose a lot during practice. Now what do we got? We got zeros on the scoreboard. Here we go. And that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. Our score at the end of three, it's the Granville Bulldogs 39, the Byron Center Bulldogs 20. And we'll take a break for some Russo's Pizza here on WCET TV. It's time to experience the flavor of Russo's Pizzeria. Pickup, delivery, and catering available. Proudly serving you since 1953. With generations of recipes to satisfy any craving, we're ready to make your next meal. Call us up or stop in the corner of 44th and Burlingame to get your piece of the action today. Welcome back to Granville High School, home of the Bulldogs. And this Bulldog Classic, it's the first time the Granville Bulldogs have hosted the Bulldogs from Byron Center. Our score at the end of one was 24 to seven, Granville. Halftime, they extended it to 32-14. And after three, it's now 39 to 20. I'm Andrew Kovac with Tom Beist, Jeff Goodyear, our sports director, Ben Fritzman and on the camera all around, good guy, Brian Waring. A little confusion with Byron Center coming out, but they got set. Gonna hand it off, gonna be a reverse. reverse. It's got in lane. Spins, gets tripped up by number four. Crosses the 20 though, down to the 19 on a nice reverse run. Yeah, Hunger for it tripped him up, but what a great call by Byron Center. Now he's cramped up. We'll try to get him up, and yep. He's hop skipping. We got and another jumping. Granville player down. We got Orchard, uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary 16, Hudsonville 14. Ooh. That's Northview is beating Forest Hills Northern 27 to nothing. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. Another bulldog down. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, if I'm if I'm Coach Eric Stiegel, I'm talking about hydration. I mean, you're good in that first quarter, but you know, now when it's uh, crunch time, third and fourth quarters. Well, I'm preaching this weekend because you're gonna get a couple days off. Yeah. Water. Don't, well, don't, don't goof around with a lot of fancy stuff and a lot of things that are loaded with carbs and sugar. Drink water, yeah, get you yourself know, balanced. These kids nowadays, though, they drink a lot of that energy stuff, which, you know, one of them maybe, but not six and seven of them. No. Water, 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 water. Water. 
Better the, for the kidneys. And the thing is, well, ex- exactly. That's what I was going to say. You keep your system flushed out. Um, so we'll what, get right- what, what was that uh, commercial makes the body feel good? Um, <laughs> I can't remember what the product was. but It's been so long at my age that the body felt good. I can't really remember. It's, um, well, it's water. It's just plain water. So with 11.50... Left here in the fourth. It'll be first down and 10. Ball's going to be on the 19-yard line. Byron Center looking again to respond and make a statement. This has been a great second half start of football well, Granville's, with the drives. Granville's got a three-score advantage. Well, a score here by Byron Center again opens that door to what if. Somebody what if you get a turnover? What somebody if? Somebody I know that be, at the beginning of the game said uh, – they were favoring Granville by three scores. Well, they've got it right now. Let's see if Granville can play defense. Schichtel looking to pass. He's got man He's in the corner. Oh, he oh, shoots him. It. 23 was open, but it was over his yeah, he didn't right put enough shoulder. Air, he didn't put quite enough air underneath it. Threw a good ball. It just got too much giddy up. That was number 23, the intended receiver. That's Blake Otto. I do like the call. I mean, it's a yeah. great call by Byron Center. Just a great call. Great time to take the shot. Wide side of the field. It just wasn't quite perfect, but it was a great call. And again, they're in, they've are in. they got three downs to play with here, so they just need their 10. they got to get down to pass, just past the nine-yard line for the line to gain. On that incompletion, it's 11.45 to go in this Fourth and final quarter, Schichtel looking to pass. He's got one in this corner, and again, he shoots it, but this time undershoots it. Yeah, and I don't know if that was the throw or the route. Now i got another Granville player just trying to stay in the game, just cramping up, he's trying to get it to move, and he's going to get substituted for. Nope. He's down on the ground. He can't hold it. It's gonna it's gonna be another timeout here. We might take a little while. Going that's, back to our that's uh, 62 down on the ground, Andy. He's been down before. Uh, yeah, Carson's down again. Going back to our uh, Russo's Pizza WCET player spotlight senior senior spotlight player um, Logan Stockwell is. Uh, I asked him who he wants to pass his jersey down to. An underclassman. He picked AJ Delton or Dehan. AJ Dehan. He said uh, he'd be a good kid to pass it on to, and uh, his favorite meal, his dad makes a great steak. There you go. And uh, what do you what do you do when you just hang out, Logan? He plays sports, and of course, what does all kids do nowadays? Play video games. His uh, favorite vacation spot is in New York. It's in Lyons, New York, close to Cooperstown. That's where his grandparents live. So his favorite vacation is heading out to New York to spend some time with grandpa and grandma. Two things on his bucket list. He wants to play college baseball or basketball, and he'd like to someday skydive. Three people he'd like to give a shout out to. He's giving a shout out to Aiden Doran, Tyson Nesbitt, and Tyson Mann. That's our Russo's Pizza, WCET, senior spotlight player. He's number five. He is the tight end and the outside linebacker for the Granville Bulldogs, Logan Stope Stockwell. Congratulations, Logan, and best of luck to you this year playing football for the Granville Bulldogs. Well, kind of an extended little uh, injury timeout here as they tend to the player on the field. He's had multiple times where he's gone down with leg cramps and they're just trying to get him stretched out the problem is they get him stretched out and of course he goes back in the game and yeah exerts that energy and uh cramps right back up again see one of the things that they got to remember is not only are they playing a game on a hot night but they've also got practice every night right and they've been practicing in august obviously we just turned the corner here for september 1st and the days have been warm in this last week and you know they put on these pads and stuff and and they like you said they exert a lot of energy they're using up a lot of uh a lot of fluids yep and this has been a war tonight there's been a lot of activity we've been up and down this field a lot 
So here comes Byron Center, third down and ten in what's, four what's down your, territory. Uh, what's your idea? He's got to go in the air. He's got he's got to roll out and he's got to go in the air. You got to put the hands in your quarterback right here. This is the kid that makes this team tick. He keeps it himself. No, that's a uh, that's, that's number four. Yeah, that's the running back out of the. So, so that's that's Otto. That's Tungate again. Tungate, Tungate. That's Tungate again. A great run, cut cut it about in half. Even more than that, probably fourth down and maybe four. He's going out of the uh, wildcat there. Yeah. So let's see what they dial up. I'm fascinated with this that they aren't putting the ball. He looks like number four stays in there. We'll see. And he's calling the play, so he's going to remain at that quarterback position. What's your idea of lemons? I know some people think for um, hydration to suck on lemons. Water. Well, I like water too, but what's your thought on a lemon? Hoo-ha. Huh? Hoo-ha. Yeah. Tungate looking to pass. He's oh, he threw a flat, good ball. And he's going to get the touchdown. Wow. Did he throw a great ball? 12 yards for the pass. What a nice call. Who caught that? Did you get it? I did not. I was watching the yeah. line play and the quarterback go. It was spectacular. With 10.34 to go, Byron Center Bulldogs are back on the scoreboard. They're and again, go for they've, one. they've cut it down. No, they're going to go for one here, which is interesting. That's number 12. Good hold. Got it through. Oh, we got a flag on the play. Well, nothing happens then. A false start, so they're going to back it up oh, five and kick that again. Might change the, let's see if that changes the decision here. I don't think it will, but let's see once what it does. Easton Wikers is the kicker. Shouldn't make a difference on that last uh, extra point. He had plenty of leg on that. Unity Christian is getting beat by St. Joseph, 35 to 28. Wow. Jennison, 28 to nothing over Forest Hills. And he got her. He got her. Down to 12 points. I was looking beyond the fence there after the extra point. The Granville Police Department has about 15 uh, Byron Center kids, and he's just turning the lights on and off just to show them what it all looks like. And they're having a great time because they're getting to push the button. Oh, is that what they're doing? Yeah, it's not any incident. It's, it's just, just show and bunch. tell. They're just showing the kids what it looks like to light that cruiser up so you can see it. <laughs> so playing some show and tell over there. Yep. Well, the hey, West Ottawa 21, Portage Northern 7, Portage Central 0, Forest Hill Central 42. That is interesting. What about this one? Oh, that's Perry and Holton. There was um, and Hudsonville still trying to hang in with Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Grand Haven ahead of Traverse City West. That's 20, interesting. 28-14. Yeah. Onside kick, and that's going to go out of bounds. That didn't help. They'll take that at the 35-yard line. Boy, I feel bad for some of these Granville kids. They've been down on the sidelines like 57. He's just now getting up. Uh, Brett Becker, and he, he has just been cramping up. He's going to go on the field. Stretched out, go right back on the field. So Granville's going to get the ball. They're going to get great field position. I like this score, though. 35-28 to 28, St. Joseph over Unity Christian. Unity Christian, I believe, is replacing 23 starters. Yeah, and Unity had a great run with that class they had that went there, you know, this past four right. years. But they didn't play anybody else. They just kept pounding it on, which is fine. But what that leaves you with is nobody with experience. Right. And that's what Unity's problem is this year. There just is nobody with experience. Tyson Mann, big pickup on first down. And uh, once again, the Granville Bulldogs, up by 12, will uh, just methodically, with 10 minutes and 14 seconds, they'll try to take six, seven, eight minutes off and uh, oh, yeah. this is get right, into the end zone. This is right in their wheelhouse, Andy. This is what this team is built for. Get the lead. Six yards on the first down. Yeah, and it's painful for the Byron Center defense because they're they're throwing everything they have at it, but well, that offensive 
That offensive eight just does the front eight, does such a great job. They've got three downs to get four yards. And that man again, he's going to be real close. Yeah, 17 on the bottom of that pile for Byron Center. And that's Strickland oh, again. Somebody uh, cramps on the bottom. Cramps. We're going to have another. We're that's, not going to go real fast here the, nine, the last 935. Is that, is that number six, number eight? That's six. Six, that's Sedinsky. Yeah. <laughs> and now and now they don't give him any sympathy anymore no. and work on him on the field. Yeah. They just get him up and drag him off. Yeah, as I say, get him off before, the field, keep the clock going. Before we were, <laughs> coach says, look, just get him to the sideline. Let's get this thing going. Yeah, there you go. Pull him off the white. Get him, there we go. Just drag him off. <laughs> They're we'll literally him off. dragging him over to the uh, water. The water. Um, so he can he can drink water and get stretched at the same time. Whatever you call those old water things there, the hoses, um, little, little uh, slinkies. Well, we got no sympathy anymore, so we're keeping it moving at 932, third down and one. Ball's on the 44 well, for the Granville Bulldogs. Byron Center Byron had Center. gone over to Mark Sisko, the coach, to talk, and uh, Sisko said, hey, get back out there. They're ready to go. We got our first Bulldog balloon floating over top of the stadium, right over yeah. the referee, just about. Third and one, so here we go. And I don't think they would go for it on fourth down. I'd punt if oh, I Oh, no. They'll, they'll go for it. Here we go. They'll go for it. They've got two. They've got to get one. Oh, it's immaterial. Just... Oh, he's a good little running back. Oh, he got balance and strength. That's, a, that's that freshman for you. I'll tell you what. He's got some strength for a, a freshman. A ninth grader has... Um, some giddy up and go. Pulowski with the tackle, but he had to bulldog him down. He had to get a hold of the horns and ride him because that bulldog was running. He's five foot nine. Now we're going to have a timeout. The clock has been stopped. He's five nine, 170 pounds. That's he, he is fun to watch. Jaden Terry. He is um, fun to watch. What was his older brother's name? Terry, huh? Cam Terry. Oh, is that okay? Remember Cam oh, Terry? Oh, very well. Yeah. Another hole. Terry, once again, fighting out to the 20 or the 35, he's got picks some, up two. He's got some great legs. Well, I mean, you know, just... I, uh, I give Eric Stiegel credit for playing him. If you're going to have a freshman on the varsity, that's just like, you know, uh, in basketball, you're going to put a freshman or, or a sophomore on the varsity, you got to play him. You and, have to. You and bring him up, you got to play him. Yeah, you can't Pulos have him. Pulowski with the tackle. Otherwise, you him. put him on JV and let him play on JV. Right. Pulowski from Byron Center with the tackle. So here we go. Second down and eight. Ball in the 35. Granville offense doing exactly what they're designed to do. But Terry's showing that he belongs here. Well, there's no doubt. And this time it's man. He's going to get yeah, stood up yeah. at the 20 or the 35. Se 71 and 35. Clay. And then in on in on the stand-up was. Well, Carson's walking over Champlin. to Coach Stiegel to see what he wants to do. I think they're going to pass. They've got third and eight. Ball on the uh, 35, seven. Well, we're just under eight minutes. I, uh, I think he's on. They're up by 12. I think he's on the ground. I think he'll run that trap. You think so? Yeah, third and he, eight? It's, you know, well, you got two downs, I got guess. Got two downs. These guys have, <laughs> these front seven have grinded it out. They have done a magnificent job. Clock's gonna be down to 7.30 on the snap. It's a handoff. Cuts up the middle. They're going to get fight. down to the 31-yard line. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you're an offensive Pick up a four. You're an offensive lineman. You want to block for this kid. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's a little short guy. He's at 5'9", but he's quick. He's quick. He's strong. And he follows his blockers. He doesn't overrun them. And he does a great job. Give me a hole and let me get through. Yep. Fourth and four. Fourth and four. Well, You've got this... options here. You can roll and pass. Yeah, you, just, you don't need to get the home run. You can just get a four-yard out of bounds and get the first down and keep the clock going. Well, this could easily be the backbreaker for Byron Center. They get this, and it kind of just takes all the air out. Smith under center. He looks up at Stiegel, and they're going to call out. timeout. Good coaching. Coach Stiegel says to Rodney Suggs, give Good. me a timeout, will you please? Good coaching. Our referee uh, crew, or our officiating crew tonight is Brian Donovan, he's the uh, white hat, the referee, 15-year uh, veteran out of Nuego. Jeff Green is your umpire. He's in the middle of the linebackers. 
30 years out of Grand Rapids. Uh, out of Lowell for 22 years is your head line judge, Mark Bradburn. The line judge, as I just mentioned, Rodney Suggs, a 17 year official out of Kentwood, and Daryl Dillard is the back judge, 20 years out of Wyoming. And our chain gang, let's give a tip of the cap to John Hess for keeping the yard marker. Dick G. Brad and Dave Zipkowski, traditionals here at Granville, they are on the, on the sticks. And the clip, he's the one that keeps track of where the ball is down, that would be Gus Terrell. Well, let's see what Coach Siegel's dialed up here, Andy. Fourth and four, six minutes and 40 seconds to go. Granville can get a first down here, could be the game. If not, it'll be a fun time for the Byron Center Bulldogs. Smith looking over his line, under center, takes the snap. He's looking to pass. Open. He's got a white man, Tyson Mann. Mann could go to the house. He's nope. gonna get tackled at the one yard line. A nice little roll around the right hand side and Tyson Mann slipped out. Got the first down all the way to the one. It's gonna be goal to goal with six and a half minutes to go. Nice pass from Carson Smith. What a wonderful call and great execution. Well, that's great. a nice thing about Carson Smith these last couple years. They've added the pass to the wing tee. And for that play right there, that's exactly when you needed it on fourth and four. It looked like a, a cutter up the middle. And uh, Just man, man cut out and in the flat took that pass. Two men in the, two men in the, in the pass pattern and both open. Yeah, and the, and the first one gave a man probably about six or seven extra yards on that block. Absolutely. First and goal, Smith, under center, wing T. It your, looks like it's- Your freshman's in. I was gonna say, it looks like- uh, He is in. I'm gonna have to learn his name because I don't get it all the time. Well, number 28. Yeah, I got that. Jaden Terry. Jaden. I can't. And Jaden just followed the front two on that left side and they bulldoze their way home. And that pretty much starts the song. That's a backbreaker for the Byron Center Bulldogs. Just a magnificent offensive drive. 6.01 in the fourth. Byron Center trying to hang in, but the Granville Bulldogs just keep putting points on the board. Going for two here, Andy, as they usually do. Going to keep it. No, nope. oh. that didn't have a chance. Nope. Good defense. Nope. That did not have a chance. Good defense. So no PAT. So 45-27. Well, that was impressive. That was just impressive. Great play calling. Tremendous execution and put themselves with 6.01 on the clock in control now, just in total control. The uh, Byron Center kids are having a bowl load of fun over there, Andy. The Granville police, they put them in the back of the cruiser, lock them in, turn all the lights on, then take them out, line them up. You can't have a better night. Do they get a, blood, a breathalyzer? I don't know. We'll see once what they're doing over there, but <laughs> I've been watching the kids and they're just having a high o time because they got both doors open as a cruiser, so they're having a high o time. Yeah, they're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. All right, 6-0-1. Byron Center looking here to get the football and just make a statement and put a score on the board. Actually, they need to keep the ball away from that Granville offense because that has been impressive tonight. That front seven of that Granville offense has been just flat out impressive. Student body's going nuts here. They're getting excited now. Great turnout. The stands filled in nicely. Yeah. Great turnout from Byron Center. Byron Center student body is unbelievable. They're packed shoulder to shoulder. It's a pop up. It's going to go to the 15, and he's going to step out of bounds short of the 20. Yeah, smart play. No place to go. It's a smart play. That's a smart play. Number 19 there. Just grab it. Luke grabbed it. Just stepped out of bounds. It's a smart football play. Well, that way he's not going to get hit. Not going to get hit, and he doesn't need to lose the football right now, and there was no place really to go. Nope. So going to put it in the hands of his offense. We'll see who the quarterback is. We'll see who's going to handle this football. Well, you know, um, there's one person I haven't given a shout-out to yet tonight, and uh, we need to do that. And in order to do that, I need to uh, find my sheet of paper because um, – 
Well, let's get this play in here first. Good call. Nice little call, good pass, great rotation. Well, Tom, we have a, a change of the guard here at Granville. I don't know if you know this or not, but for years and years and years, Sue Van Gessel had taken over for Linda Kibbe as the athletic secretary. Yes. Well, Sue, at the end of June, said she's going to take care of some grandbabies and uh, have a gay old time in retirement. So no, she's, I, I will not accept that, she's, Sue. She's going with uh, Linda Kibbe in retirement. I don't like it. And you'll like this, though, as we look to pass. Over. Oh, the top. oh, oh! He threw Incomplete. a beautiful ball. It just didn't land quite right. It fluttered a little bit, and he couldn't hold on. Randy Remenap used to be the principal here before Randy Morris. And Randy Remenap has a son who's got good taste. And his son married a young lady named Molly. Molly Remenap is now got three kids made Randy Remenap a grandfather of seven kids now. So Randy has three of Molly's kids, and that makes Molly Remenap the new Granville High School sports um, secretary for uh, Brian Parsons. All right, so I'll we, try. We want to remember Molly Remenap and wish her all the best yes, as, we do. We, as we work with her in the sports program. Tough job. Oh, he eluded. He's free now. Oh, he's, he's smart, too. Bounds. He's smart, though. I mean, great yep. run. Uh, on Hunter, third and three. Yeah, on third and three, you know, he didn't have it open. He eluded a tackler, made a great run, kept it alive, got out of bounds. With five I mean, minutes, though, the uh, Bulldogs are right. stretching the field out a little bit, and if he gets a short pass, okay. That was a long run, though. Yeah, I wonder what happened to our original quarterback for Byron Center, the lefty. He has not returned to the game. Schickdell? Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, been Tungate, though. Yeah, and he has not returned, and he throws a beautiful ball. Could he have had uh, some cramps? Something. Because Tungate's a right-hander. Oh, that's another great pass. Right on the money. Schickdell was a left-handed thrower, and Tungate is a right-hander, but they both have running ability. Well, 19 with a tremendous reception. Luke just held on to a football, got popped. Byron Center's offense, I like this offense. They just seemingly can't keep their hands on the football long enough because that Granville offense just chews up too much time. And they're right at the line as the sticks get uh, marked. Now it's going to be out to the right-hand side. And He's out of, out of bounds. bounds. It's a good call, great play. Gains a good solid five, six yards. Granville, oh, they're saying he went out on his own, so the clock continues to run. I uh, talked to a referee about that, saying, when you go out of bounds, why is the clock not stop? Well, if you go out on your own, and again, I don't understand, because Tyson Mann went out on his own the one time, and the clock stopped, but... Maybe if you're being guarded and you step out? I don't know, but the referee just stopped the clock for reasons that I'm not sure. See, I don't quite understand. I don't understand when the clock st now stops. We got a, now we got a clock it. problem. Now they're monkeying with a clock, and now we got a clock problem. Ooh, check out this score. You ready for this one, Tom? Yeah. 27-17. 27-17. Mona Shores over Rockford. Oh my. That's, and that's in the fourth quarter. That would be huge for Mona. West Ottawa, 21-10 over Portage Northern. Uh, they changing Something's, the clock? Watch the no, clock. No, I don't know what they're doing. Here's they got a, this thing all messed up now. Isn't this your alma mater, uh, South Christian? Yeah. 28-6 over East Grand Rapids. I heard I heard East Grand Rapids played. Uh, who did they Here get? we go. Got it right now. We're at 430. Here okay. we go. Oh, they played Rockford last week. I heard East Grand Rapids played Rockford because they think Rockford can go a long ways, have a great, uh, a great record, and that will give East Grand Rapids playoff points for having been beat by maybe a 7-1 and one or an 8-0 team. Well, in theory, I suppose that's right. Well, East Grand Rapids is down to South Christian 28-6. Uh, uh, South, I was told South Christian's got a kid that's uh, Dehan, everything. DeHaan's the real deal. Yeah, the, the quarterback, quarterback there is the real deal. He is the real deal. I've seen him, and Lowell, he is the real deal. Lowell, 28 to nothing over Thornapple Kellogg. Oh, 
just overthrown by a little bit. He throws a good ball. I like I like the way he plays quarterback. Four Stills uh, Eastern. Tungate. I just like the way he plays quarterback. Four Stills Eastern, 35-14 over South Haven. Okay. Northview all over the Wolves from Wyoming, 27 to nothing at halftime. Oh my. Holland's getting beat up pretty good by Comstock Park at half. It's 43 to eight. Here at Granville, it's 45-27 with under four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Fourth and five, It's Andy. Uh, Russo's Pizza. Fourth and five. Uh, soon to be named player of the game. Tungate's gonna nope, get stuck. Nope, he's not gonna get her. Granville Bulldogs will get it on downs. And the way this offense is going, they can run it out. That was a good defensive stand. That was a wonderful defensive stand by Granville. Byron Center threw everything at them but the kitchen sink, but they just didn't have enough to keep that going. And with 3.43 left here in the fourth, leading 45-27, Granville will take over the football. First down and 10, ball spotted on the 39-yard line of Granville. And that offense, that front seven, is just looking to grind it out. I would be amazed if it goes outside of these tackles. They'll and keep Coach it in Eric between. Coach is going to have practice, and he's going to have a big yellow Gatorade cooler full of water and say, everybody drink. There it goes, right off the guard. 19 finally wrestled him down for Myers Center. That's Luke Laskin. Luke wrestled him down. The That's ball carrier is our Russo's Pizza player of the game, number 17. Tyson Mann. Tyson Mann, number 17, is our Russo's Pizza player of the game. He led off this game with a 82-yard run on the opening kickoff with 11 seconds down in the game. Put Granville on the board. Smith with the extra two points. It was eight to nothing, and Granville Bulldogs have not looked back. No, and Tyson on that first run ran right by his coach and waved to him on the way to the end zone. Yeah, just about. Big hole, Andy. Oh, he ducked again. The crowd's going to catch up with him. And that's, there it is. Our Russo's Pizza player of the game. Yep, that was. Senior running back. You know, he's only 170 pounds, six foot tall. But I tell you what, he's got some strong legs in there. But if we put him on the scale right now, he's probably down in water to 160. That could be. This has been an impressive Granville, Granville game. I mean, the offense putting up 45. The defense, though, he gave up 27 points, but they held well, when they needed to hold. On that game last week with uh, Graham Blank, they uh, put up 49. Graham Blank had uh, 25, so it's about right in that same area. You can bend, but you don't break. Here's our freshman running back again. He chugs his way down, dragging number 23. Blake Jayden. Otto with you. Caden, he's just dragging him along. Jaden Terry. He is he is fun to watch. He is going to be fun for the next few years here in Granville. You're going to get a big kick out of him. If you haven't seen him, come on out here live on one of these home games and watch him carry the football. He could be our next Carson Smith. We've been watching Carson, who's at quarterback tonight. He's a senior. He started at quarterback as a backup as a sophomore. And then don't forget our Russo's Pizza, WCET, senior spotlight player, number five, the outside linebacker and tight end, Logan Stockwell-Stope, or Stope Stockwell. Well, 71 wraps him up and brings him to the ground there for Byron Center. That's Timothy Clay, but ball stays in possession of Granville. Gonna set up third down and six. They're in four down territory. They're just gonna keep grinding. There's gonna be no hurry here. Clock's ticking. We're gonna be probably under a minute when he snaps this football for sure. You know, I'm impressed with Logan for another reason. He is on that left side. He's the uh, tight end. He's been in pretty much every play of this game. Okay, he's, yep, and our quarterback just being smart, watching the uh, back judge raise his hand and make the count. Run inside, ball goes down, 45 seconds. We'll probably have to have one more play. That's Jaden Terry again. It's fourth and fourth and one. Oh, now we got an injured Bulldog from the Byron Center side. And he's holding a leg. 
He's struggling up, 51. He's gotten up. He says, let's, so we don't have a stoppage. So let's they're gonna get let this the game done, he says. Clock ticked down. They're letting it run. And they're going to let it go. The ball was just spotted, so there does not have to be another play. The ball was just spotted. Andy end it. And Granville is lining up. Led by our senior spotlight, senior Logan Stockwell. He'll lead the shake of the hands. And uh, it's 45-27. Granville in this first ever meeting of Bulldogs. They had some, they had some grueling plays out there as the fireworks are going off the softball or the uh, uh, um, softball field. Yep. Right at second base there, somebody's got him flying. What a great night! A beautiful night for football here in Granville. The Granville Bulldogs put on a show, not only offensively, but I think the defense showed they have some real ability to stop. Byron Center is a good football team, folks. They're going to run off a good six, probably in two season. They're a good football team. They got beat by a better football team tonight. Granville players are coming over. It was impressive all the way, Andy. The fireworks are great, folks. If you've never been to a high school football game. Come out and join us here in Granville at home. You will enjoy it. What a what a nice night. Uh, 83 uh, degrees at game time. Halftime was 79 degrees. I think we learned something here for the Granville Bulldogs. It's time to hydrate. Uh, too many guys were down with injuries, but fortunately they're pretty deep, and they made the plays when necessary. The most impressive was that fourth and hold to stop the Byron Center Bulldogs in that fourth quarter uh, and take over the ball and then turn it around and kill the rest of the clock. The coaching staffs now are shaking hands. The players are starting to head for the exits. Our Russo's Pizza player of the game, number 17 for the Granville Bulldogs, senior Tyson Mann. Call Mike Russo at 530-3200. Tell him Tyson Mann is your Russo's Pizza player of the game if you're the first one to call in. You can get yourself a free pizza. I'm Andrew Kovac with my partner, Tom Bice. Jeff Goodyear helping us out in the background. Our sports uh, director, Ben Fridsma. And all around good guy on the camera of the second half, Brian Waring. 45-27, our final score here at the House of the Bulldogs. Good night, everybody, and God bless.